You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Gelenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast, number 113 with Ari Slash. How are we doing today, Ari? Yo, what up, dude? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's been almost two and a half years since we've last spoken yeah, on the cast. Time flies, dude. Yeah. Holy. Episode four. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the first ones I remember. Yeah. I remember we talked about combat achievements were coming up back then, and then Temporos was coming out, and we talked about like some. They were already pitching some CM mode for it. And <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so did you like take a little listen beforehand? I'm just curious. No, I, I've just okay. listened to the cast before and it okay, kind of okay. became like this core memory thing kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to remember some of the things. I, just rem- I do vividly remember certain parts um, and I just remember I was running already at the time. So uh, yeah. good times though. Uh, so... I guess, I, well, first of all, I'm excited to just catch up and see what's happened over the past, you know, two yeah, plus years. Yeah, so, um, sure. what is new, I guess? What has happened in the past couple of years that's like significant? I know you've started kind of streaming again somewhat consistently. I think you're uh, going to be streaming over the summer. Is that correct? Well, yeah. So, a couple of years ago, like I used to stream a lot. RuneScape was basically my life when I was playing hardcore a lot. Uh, and uh, I guess. Because I was also attending uni at the same time, but at some point I just uh, I felt like I'm not going to progress uni the way I would like to as long as I keep streaming the way uh, that I am. So I just kind of like had a reality check, I guess, where I just... And I also lost motivation on the hardcore, so I just kind of decided that, okay, I'm just going to stream less and focus more on university so that I can get this done one day. And... Uh, yeah, now I'm at the point where I have some courses left, and then after summer I have to write my master's uh, degree thesis, and hopefully, if all goes well, by next summer, uh, the thesis will be done, and so will all the courses, and uh, yeah, I can become a functioning member of society. <laughs> <Functioning>. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Finally, can be put into society correctly. Yeah, yeah. But there is more things than that as well. Like RuneScape kind of lost its magic to me at some point when I just reached reached the point on the hardcore where I was just going for XP. None of the gear goals that were left interested me enough to risk my hardcore for it. And then at some point, I realized that. Okay, so if I'm not actually going to get 200 mil all, is there any point in even doing what I'm doing right now? And uh, after like thinking this way, it just slowly started. I started losing my motivation until I reached the point where, yeah, I just couldn't be bothered. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's interesting how that kind of works. The whole like motivate. It's like the um, aware emote. You just become very aware yeah. of like what you're yes, doing. Yes, it's very accurate, actually. Yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's kind of like RuneScape, though. I mean, it's just there's there's endless goals, and if you really, instead of just enjoying the game for what it is and just enjoying the account, when you really start thinking of what is this ultimately leading to, I mean, it ends up being pointless. I mean, but then again, you just mm-hmm. look at you. I mean, I don't, without going too without getting too morbid and deep, I mean, that's like life. You just think of life, and you just think of like it is true. You have all these yeah. goals and stuff, but like, what is it all? four at the end of the day that but, is um, true but yeah it's interesting so and you have had your burnouts and you've had your like comeback so where are you f- what are you feeling right now toward the game well i'm kind of like i used to be very like avid uh follower of all the blog posts you know i used to watch all the q and a's i used to get very upset or happy over potential updates and shit but like Now I'm kind of at a point where, honestly, I don't give a fuck. Like, whatever they put in the game, I'm going to try it out. I might like it. I might not like it. But I'm not going to lose my sleep over it anymore, right? I'm just going to play the game for what it is. Because at the end of the day, whatever I feel about things is probably not how Jagex sees things. And if I care too much, uh, sure, the game 
is important to me and that's like why I cared. But the more I care, the more I basically get upset over things that aren't the way I would like them to be, which <laughs> I feel like is most of the time, sadly. So I've just kind of reached the point where, you know, I'll play the game when it's fun. And if it's not, I'll just log out. I don't have to be logged in all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at, really. That's good. That's like a, like the healthiest point to be at with the game. It's hard. It's like you got to like walk that tightrope kind of because uh, there's definitely I feel like you and me as well as a bunch of others in the community kind of have that mentality where we can just lose our balance with the game either one way or the other. It's either like mm -hmm. full burnout or just going hard as hell. And it's like, okay, yes, let's let's just walk this tightrope and let's enjoy the game for what it is and not get to yes. it because I'm, I'm the same way as you like I, I get. Mm -hmm. Uh, like almost emotional about like updates it's like this is completely out of my control let me just enjoy what's in the game and try not to yes, focus that, on those things that is the healthy state of mind to be in because if you care so deeply about everything it'll not only like impact your own enjoyment of the game it'll like impact other things if you're like because when i was thinking like that runescape was by far the most important thing to me in my life mm -hmm. so it like when the most important thing in your life is like going in a way where it's upsetting you, obviously it's going to like affect other areas of your life as well. And uh, I don't know. I just, I don't want to be like that again. I feel like just going with the game, enjoying it when it's fun and just logging out when it's not, it's like, uh, it's, it's the way to go. I feel like. Yeah. So there has been a few updates over the past couple of years and I want to get your thoughts on it now. Just mm -hmm. for those listening, you do still have a top page hardcore. And, for now, yes. Yeah, for now. <laughs> I mean, it's not com clearly it's not that competitive because you're still <laughs> top page. Yeah, that's true. It's been like uh, I don't know, like maybe two more than two years now since I like seriously tried to hit my one mil XP every day goal on it. Uh, more than two years for sure, and I. Went from stopping at rank six, I think, to now I don't think I'm like top twenty yet. It's still like higher than top twenty, I think. But yeah, mm. it is pretty. It is indeed not very competitive, like you said. Yeah. Well, it's just tough because like year. So the first like five years of hardcore, it, it seemed like um, Bodie and like all these other big streamers were just really pushing for hardcore. There was so much excitement around it, so much hype. Uh, just the prospect of making new hardcores and trying to get them like super good. And then just the constant DCs and the constant just mistakes mm -hmm. and just wiping thousands of hours of mm -hmm. progress just down the drain. Like that just destroyed the mode somewhat. And now it's at a point where people just don't even want to give it a shot again. It's just like, this is just too much work. It's it's RuneScape. It's not like a short game where you can just progress yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that was always the fundamental problem of hardcore, where you can lose it, like, so commonly even, because of you put in so many hours that even though the chance of a disconnection is small, it's amplified by the fact that we are putting in thousands of hours into this account. So, obviously, you are going to hit that small chance of disconnection at some point. Yep. And, like, it's more than common that it happens usually when you're risking your status, because at some point... Uh, the hardcores who don't really plan their whole playstyles around disconnections, which is the way it should be, to be fair. Uh, most of their time after a mid game is going to be in dangerous scenarios when they're logged in, because you don't have to constantly be doing safe shit. You can like be risking your status and stuff. And most people in that stage uh, hit the unlucky dice roll where they DC the wrong time and they die. Now in the past. Two and a half years, have you had any close calls on the hardcore at all? No, I've been locked out most of the time, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> so, no close calls for me. Uh, I've actually logged in to do like a raid here or there, because solo raids, they're, they're like, I don't know, they're just close to my heart. I, I yeah. really enjoy doing them. And uh, every now and then I just get the craving to do one. But I'm talking like less than 10 per year, even yeah. still. <laughs> but like... Uh, yeah yeah that's cool um i don't know if i ever told you i don't know if you ever knew but um i got my old hardcore back it got unbanned oh, after four years yeah i remember hearing something yeah. about this yes so that that one that one also like i i made it like 
literally minute of release and it's still mm-hmm. alive so uh you just <laughs> oh, keep damn. just keep it logged out and it'll stay yeah alive, basically. yeah it's one of the oldest hardcores then <laughs> yeah um so let's let's think uh combat achievements did come out raids mm-hmm. 3 came out yep. um let's think what what uh what other like huge update came out well recently? guardians of the rift came out true I guess. yes um, um ne- next came out or did you say next no, no, I didn't, didn't say next. Damn, yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot has come out. So, next, what what are yeah. your what are your thoughts on combat achievements? Let's just kind of go there and just like linger for a tiny bit. Uh, um, it's cool, honestly. I uh, I think the rewards could be even more rewarding because th- that shit is not easy. Dude. Like, it's not. Uh, I was looking at some of the stuff, and sure, you look at the easy ones, and they're easy. Uh, but they they are some of them are difficult. Like. I think the rewards could have been even more rewarding. I mean, they're already good, but I think that the difficulty of them could warrant even more powerful rewards. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's uh, it would be okay. And it also... Uh, I haven't really done much of them because I had already stopped playing my hardcore when it came out and uh, when I was playing my ultimate, like, fucking around on it. On an ultimate, you have to do everything so methodically. You can't just, like, drop what you're doing and go do some random shit, right? Yep. Uh, so it didn't seem that appealing but now that i'm playing my uh, group iron man we actually a few days ago me tipperkitty and hauke uh we're randomly like uh, we've been pretty bored uh no reason to log in on any other account would you guys like to continue uh the group and they were like sure we feel the same way so just a couple days ago we bonded the group back up and uh, i've been looking at the combat achievements on this account i'd like to try to do some of them so that when we start doing next and stuff, I have the kill account benefits and the teleport. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I agree with your sentiment about like the rewards not being strong enough there. It's at a weird spot where like th- the vast majority of the community will never get grandmaster. It's just like, mm-hmm. they just won't. And so putting a bunch of like crazy actual beneficial rewards, for example, like a, an infernal cape enhancement or just like something like that. Obviously that's not what I'm advocating for, but just things that act- actually give stat upgrades. It's scary because not only will like the vast majority of the community probably vote no to that and just be really pissed if it ever did come into the game. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, then you have to in turn make the combat ch- achievements easier almost. That's yes, kind that of is how it goes. goes. Yes, that is how everything always goes. Mm-hmm. Like if they added some shit behind 200 mil skills as well, that would like make yeah. the same exact scenario happen. Right now, 200 mil is something you go for if you want to go for it. But as soon as they add some like reward behind it, people start feeling like they have to do it. And uh, then when people feel like they have to do something, they want it to become easier. That's always how it goes with everything, I feel like. Yeah. I'm surprised that, like, Inferno has never actually become easier. Besides, like, gear upgrades and stuff. Yeah, just uh, it has, that. like, through gear, kind of. But That's other true. than that, they haven't, like, made direct updates to Inferno, which yeah. kudos for that. They should not be touching that shit by making it easier in any way. Dude, I was just thinking about it. Like, you you had mentioned solo raids. And uh, I think, like, two streams ago, I just mentioned how somebody in my stream had died twice in a raid and he pulled a Tebow and he showed the picture on stream. Oh, nice. And I'm like, dude, it is so cool that raids won still has that ultimate excitement about pulling a team mm-hmm. purple you know what i mean like that's like yeah. they nailed that they really did they nail raids one hundred percent i agree like yeah. the fact that years and years down the line you can still just be so amped up mm-hmm. over a drop at a raid that's years old yeah and the way you get the purple light in the end as well as <laughs> all dies it's just it's all perfect it's, it's just good it's a masterpiece dude it, it is good that was mostly mod kieran right that kind of like yeah home at least he was behind Inferno as well, wasn't he? Yep. And yep. Uh, maybe Tob even. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I know he became kind of like a community a community person, more more like a um, supervisor over. Yeah, over and you can like you can that point of time where he stopped doing stuff. You can also like see how stuff never really came out that um, skill requiring anymore. Mm-hmm. Like everything since then has just simply not been as mechanically challenging or interesting that that's the main thing it's like the mechanically interesting it's something Mm -hmm. where where you see where you can play around with the content enough you start finding these hidden rhythmic um just charming parts of the raid like for example like four to one is just so beautiful 
so it, it, it's not intuitive whatsoever it's not like baba where you go into toa and you're just like oh go to this rock okay and i'll hit boss mm. and i'll go to like there's yeah yeah yeah, I don't know. And so now I'm not going to just totally shit on TOA. I actually think TOA is an amazing raid for the most part. I think it's like mm -hmm. very well done. And I also have to always keep in mind that they are making a raid that has to account for so many different team sizes and invocations and mm -hmm. all of this stuff where in my yeah. head, I'm always just thinking like, man, I wish this solo variant of this raid could be a lot more interesting than it is. But they have so many more things behind the scenes that they're dealing with and That's balance true, issues yeah. and stuff. So, mm. And uh, this time it was clear that it was one of their main motivations before even starting developing that they wanted the content to be like way more accessible. Uh, yeah. Not just by, you know, high level players, but, you know, even just the uh, mid game and is in the middle of their Slayer grinder or whatever. Yeah, what are your thoughts on invocation system and just well, the, the the raids three being a quote unquote raid? I mean, this is like end game content being accessible to everybody. What are your mm, thoughts? I think like it would have been amazing if they just straight up removed uh, drops from the drop table and added them as your invocation goes higher. That way, someone in mid game can go and get a fang and a ring, right? But because you're in shit gear and you're in mid game, you don't deserve the chance to get like the Masori or the Tumegan Shadow. And then the people a bit uh, further in the game than that would have access to like Masori and stuff. And then the very end game content would be farming the staff from the high invocation raids. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would have. Uh, that would have made way more sense in my opinion and the noobs would have been like angry about it but i've never understood this kind of mindset where you want end game content to be doable before you're in end game because if you think about runescape and you assume that you just play one account you go you play through early game you play through mid game but then when you get to end game that's where you're going to be forever so it would make sense in my opinion to like plan content and how it's made around that fact that the people who are in endgame would have stuff to do because that is where you spend most of the hours on your account in my opinion and it was just dumb that it didn't matter if you're in endgame or in mid game you had like the access to the same endgame items and even though you could argue that yeah but the endgame guys can do it like faster and uh it's better like uh, GP per hour for them, but I feel like just fundamentally it's wrong that uh, a mid game Andy could pull the shadow from the from some low invocation rate, even if they say that it's uncommon. Yeah, there there is that point. I always just think like, well, at least with like raids one and two, I mean, you could get just carried at a very low, and you still mm. always have that chance of a Tebow or a Scythe. So, like, yeah. the really piss-low rate of it, I feel like, is fine. Yeah, there's going to be some new bandies that pull it, which is, I don't know, I think there's a little bit of charm in that. Nobody should actually go for it if you're just doing, like, 150s. Just mm -hmm. that. And you yeah. will be punished for that. You're going to have to s sit there for hours. Mm. Um, hundreds of hours. Uh, so, what... Okay, just to kind of, like, alter the question. What do you think TOA did right above other raids? Like, what, what do you think they excelled at? That well, I, I think the invocation system is really cool. Like, uh, obviously, it's going to be after a time optimized to which ones are the best to run to get certain invocation things and stuff like that. But um, I think it's a really cool mechanic. I'm a Path of Exile player, and uh, there is a mechanic in Path of Exile that kind of uh, plays around with the same thing. And I felt like they did take some uh, inspiration from that, for sure. And there was some mechanics as well, like... Uh, that Path of Exile has in the bosses, like the memory game in the, what's the boss called with the circle? Oh, Arca. Yeah, Arca, yeah. Uh, but obviously these are not uh, mechanics that a game invents and then from then on, on onwards, it's always their mechanic. And if other games mm -hmm. put it in their game, what I mean that it's, it's a, I think it's a great thing that you take things from other games and you put them in your game. And this way, like good ideas will be implemented in more games and all gaming kind of grows because uh, the good ideas are being used by more than just the guy who came up with them. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, that invocation system was really a cool idea in my opinion for the raid. And uh, I think they also kind of uh, did a good job with the supply system where you can have it in one inventory space kind of and they yes. go there and you can yes. pull shit from there. And uh, that was also a good, uh, good ad. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like the rooms that really excelled. I think Aka is great, and I'm really glad that they didn't just fully patch the butterfly method of running around. Because right, yeah. I do remember when that first was discovered like in, you mm. know, in the first couple weeks of release, or maybe it was even the first week um, or first day. I don't even know. But basically, I remember seeing it, and I was like, oh, this looks so difficult. Like, this looks annoying. <laughs> And yeah. there, there's always part of me, and I think there's part of like other players as well, um, that when you see something that's like really challenging and you don't know how to do it, and you're seeing other people just abuse it, so not like abuse it, but just using it, and just they're just getting like, I don't know, they're they just have a massive advantage. It almost makes you feel like it should be nerfed or it should be patched or <laughs> something. Yeah, they're they're ready their mentality. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's weird because like when you first see it, it's almost like this. Um, you, it's like Jagex tends to really patch things really quickly and sometimes mm -hmm. they don't patch things quickly enough. So then it's like, okay, like at what point do we decide yeah. if this should be in the game or not? But I'm really yeah. happy they they kept the butterfly method because that feels, that when I enter Aka, it feels good. Like it feels like I'm kind of doing like a four to one Ulm sort of. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important that in RuneScape, like when it comes to mechanical, like clicking and shit, moving your mouse, like effort should always be rewarded. Yeah. I don't think it like uh, encourages a very healthy game where, you know, if you put in effort, it's like discouraged or something. Uh -huh. I, fe I feel like if you are willing to put in the effort and do the sweaty shit, there should be a reward for doing it, whether it's using less supplies or, you know, killing the boss faster or. I think it's uh, healthy that game. The game rewards like this what your players for putting in the effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the next two years, what would you like to see come out for raids four? How would you like to see it? Would you like? Uh, and I'm just gonna share a few things before I let you answer. Um, mm -hmm. Part of raids that I really loved was like the idea of not getting like a world first completion for even the first day. I think just yeah. the hype of a raid being set at one difficulty and just being incredibly difficult really sets like it the content on twitch is just insanely hype it just reminds me of tob and inferno of just the brand new raid and you can't just run in into like an entry mode and discover all the mechanics eas easily you have to go in at the hardest difficulty some people had even um mentioned like what if who knows maybe they do keep the invocation system but what if like the first week there is no invocation system you can only do it on like the highest difficulty and th so then you keep that hype and then after the first week or something it like kind of starts toning down and then by the end of the month it's whatever um anyway yeah so, so what, what 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 would you like to see from raids for uh yeah i think your idea is great i also love that uh how TOV took over 24 hours to complete, I think. Yeah. I Which think is was... insane when you think about it now. <laughs> people do it in yeah. sub 20, like, easily. Like, it's the standard, basically. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I remember watching it, and it was amazing content and shit. Like, that, sh that is good. Uh, it, there should be more stuff like that. And, uh, I don't know, mechanically, I'd like the rate to have, like, interesting uh, stuff that is like four to one in all, you know, something like that, that the players discover themselves. But the problem is that <laughs> all this kind of mechanic or mechanics are stuff that they didn't put in intentionally. They just happened to somehow become a thing. It's the same with like cut it, barb fish, right? Yep. It, it's like a mini game within the actual fishing, but it's not like they plan to make it like that. Mm -hmm. And uh I don't know. We're, we're just going to have to hope that uh, they somehow pull this miracle again where they uh, <laughs> accidentally put in like some very interesting discoverable mechanic that makes the boss like very interesting to kill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Because yeah. these things where things light up and you have to go click them and then you can click the boss again and stuff like that. It, it's just like, like an intentional mechanical way of killing something. It just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, yeah. I I enjoy, um, well, part of the cool thing about 
OSRS is like everything's tick based. And so as mm-hmm. long as as long as like a, the game dev understands math and understands like rhythm and can set things to certain ticks, like, okay, this thing's going to attack every four ticks, this thing can attack every six ticks. Like if you're a, if you're a genius game dev, like you can start planning these things kind of like in the background where on the surface level, it doesn't look like you can abuse or like do a skip or do anything like that or like, you know, do some crazy stuff like four to one or four to zero and stuff. But deep down, you know that because these things are on certain cycles that inevitably there will be some way to abuse it. And yeah. Some way to like right. get around it. True. Um, yeah. So uh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that because of the success of TOA, I'm worried that all future raids will just be open to everybody just simply because the community, the entire community gets to be involved with it, which is ultimately what the company wants. They want people playing the game. Um, but maybe I'm thinking, okay, maybe if not raids four is not a super hype thing. What if they come out with like blue Inferno or some like Inferno 2.0 or something where you're not getting all these best in slot rewards, you know, from like a raid, but you have one ultimate challenge that is the hype, you know, to, to kind of like relive that Inferno magic. Um, that's what I really want. I just want to, re- I, the mm. commute, th- dude, players are so fucking good nowadays. Like, yeah, that's true. Have you seen the talent of this community in the past? Yeah, they several are years? insane. Like, <laughs> I feel like in like two or three years, your average player just got so much fucking better. <laughs> so <laughs> much better. Dude. Holy dude. Okay. So I was talking to Reed or Zach badass as people mm. remember him. Um, and I've, I've mentioned this on the save cast a few times, but like he reached out to me and, um, you know, he was just talking about like how crazy it feels because because he he would have like long burnouts and stuff like he would play and and at one point he was considered like one of the best PVMers you know because he could do long DKs trips and he could do flicking bandos and things like that like anything yeah. that was in the game he was he he could excel at and then mm-hmm. he took like years off from the game and he he came back and he's trying to get into like gauntlet and raids and stuff and it's just like damn if you have not been playing this game just daily. For all these years, you're at a severe disadvantage, and it just yeah. I and I I feel bad always bringing Reed up. I love him to death, but it's like he he is like the prime example of like if you take a break from this game, you're gonna see the community just shoot up in skill level while you just are slowly digressing. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, but uh, that kind of happened to me as well, I guess, um, in some way because. I when I was playing my hardcore, I think I was like uh, the 11th or something to an infernal game. I think. Oh shit! I might be wrong. And I was like one of the first ones to have like uh, a god sword or something. And I'm talking like uh, maybe maximum of 10 people did it maybe before me. Mm-hmm. But now, <laughs> when you look at your average hardcore and how fucking geared they are, <laughs> it's actually <laughs> fucking insane the stuff they have and like. It's the same with like when CG came out. I remember Lake being like, "Yeah, there's like no no one on the high score." So I thought it would be cool if I, you know, I just kill ten CG and I'd be the only one on high scores. Mm. And now when you look at the CG high scores, there's people with KZs in the fucking thousands, dude. Like Jesus. holy shit! Yeah, your average the average player just got like so much better. I feel like in the few years, and I definitely feel what Reed said where. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm like some washed up uh, grandpa gamer now for sure. <laughs> I know. It's funny to see it like happen to you like real time. You're like, oh shit. Like I used to be the prime example of like a great hardcore now. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually insane. Like I, I would like people even as much as they meme me for never having done like stuff like TOB and uh, well, all this other stuff has come out since then. Mm-hmm. Most people would place me like in the top five or ten or something at least back then mm-hmm. but now <laughs> i'd be lucky if i'm even <laughs> thought of in the top 50 or something <laughs> it's yep. funny dude yeah um okay so next came out have you even touched next have you have you gone there i i have not we have plans to do it with the group right now uh i am 90 magic and we just finished cg we got lucky as Fuck, we have like 1,200 combined CGKC in our trio. And guess how many enhanced we have? I have no idea. 
How many? <laughs> I have six of them. <laughs> Sheesh. So everyone gets a bow and a blade. And uh, I recently finished the CG I had to do to have the shards to make the corrupted bow and the armor. So now I'm just blasting Slayer to get my magic to 96, I think. Because I'm the only cheesecaper in the group and it's annoying me. <laughs> and I don't really want to stream any BVM content with it being like that. So yeah. I'm kind of just prioritizing uh, Slayer, magic levels, Inferno, and then we can start doing stuff uh, as a group. And uh, we are planning on doing some next. Yeah, Thip is also saying that it would be good if we do some next to get access to the heal shards uh, to make the potions that we can then use at other places. Mm, yeah. So we are planning on doing it. Uh, yeah, but I haven't done it before. No. I'm surprised with, um, you know, like I've always had my gripes with Nex. To be honest, I, I've had pretty decent luck at Nex, so I can't really complain mm -hmm. too much. And it's actually kind of enjoyable when you get a good team and you're just sending them. It's really not that mm -hmm. bad. The, the only bad part is just how long it takes to get a drop if you're really looking at the rates. Um, yeah, and I feel like a lot of the PVM and they struggle with the aspect where it like eats your brews. I can't really relate to this problem because I have like infinite brews and resource basically. Mm. But uh, I feel like a lot of people, Ironmen, uh, find that to be like a problem with Nex where you just uh, yeah. lose your supplies. I don't think that's quite as big of a problem now simply because like TOA has come out and it just shits out mm -hmm. Toad Flax Seed. Shits yeah, out Snapdragon. It's yeah, just, just constantly shitting out them. And so like the, the J mods know. You know, and they're they're starting to like just pump out seeds, basically. Right. Like, yeah. It's it's actually crazy. I think torstols like as a, I think a torstol weed is like 4k or something. I remember them used they oh, used to be like cheap. 12k or something. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They used to be really expensive. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. 4K, I, I think what the when next had originally come out, we were so used to things like Fasani's and all these things where you didn't even have to use any supplies of your own. And so we were getting mm. pretty spoiled with it. That's true. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I eventually need to go back to next. The problem is, is like you said, like I got to do my CAs first. I got to reclaim my Zuck helmet so I can go in with only 15 kill count. I love that they l reduced it by half. It used to be 30 at Grandmaster. Now it's right. 15. Oh. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I think the GM should should be rewarding like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so let's talk a, a little bit about like those skilling mini games. So Temporos and Guardians of the Rift came out. What are your thoughts on those? I'm I'm pretty sure you've messed around with both of those. Yeah. So I've uh, Temporos. I've done a bunch of. I like soloing it. I like how it's every time uh, kind of the. Like the amount of fish you take and put in and stuff like that is the same, and how yes. players discover the method where you like remove the specials if you get it under ten percent, I think, as soon as like the next phase starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I I like it. It's super enjoyable. I feel like it's also rewarding. It's fun. You get the good fishing XP. I think. Uh, and you're not getting RNG either. Like it's consistent. Yes, yes it's yeah. consistent, which is important. I felt like. Uh, it's fun. It's uh, they did a great job with it. I don't necessarily enjoy the doing it in a mass world, but soloing it is great. I uh, like it, and the barrel is amazing for Karamb ones. I'm doing it right now, sitting here. At yeah. Ones. yeah, yeah, it's great. It's like yeah. before in the game, if you wanted an AFK of that tier, I felt like I feel like you had to go for basically uh, redwoods. Yeah, like if we don't count sandcrabs and combats, mm -hmm. but like now you have access to that kind of AFK in a gathering skill like much earlier. You just get the barrel and you go the Karam ones. Mm -hmm. It's so busted. It's literally like four and a half minutes of just mm. yeah, it's and it's amazing. consistent. It's not like a redwood where you could just leave your computer and you just chop one log and it's gone. That's true. Now yeah. you're you're here and you're good. <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh guardians of the rift so i've been playing my ultimate a bit um uh, i did cg on my ultimate i actually finished it i got the uh, enhanced seed and five armor seeds on ultimate apparently it's not worth to get the helmet uh, in most cases it's not worth the inventory space compared to like a brew in terms of trip length if i understood correctly mm. or you just have like a slayer helm on so uh, it's not worth an ultimate to have the crystal helmet. So I finished CG and then because of the efficiency nerd that I am, I didn't want to just start doing Slayer randomly because 
on ultimate when you want to do prayer later it's pain because you have to like kill myth dragons or myth kill dragons and then have the marantil and then <laughs> you know you have to do the whole process from beginning to end every like inventory you kill dragons take the bones go to your gilded altar light the burners and use it for prayer and it just seemed so despair i instead I was like 40 runecrafting, I did the RC quest and I did the mini game to 77 RC to get the outfit from Guardians of the Rift. And then the outfit is storable and you can put the catalytic talisman in the hat, which gives me like perma access to all the catalytic altars. And you even get the thread or the needle, which I can just destroy and get it back later by using a normal needle on the uh reward guardian or whatever mm. and the plan was to now i'm like at bloods until 95 or 90 rune crafting and then i'll switch to souls until 95 and then i can do dragon slayer too so i can make wrath runes and then when i do my slayer grind on the ultimate i'll get uh, i think there's a way to get one to one slayer to prayer xp with wrath runes if you're like doing melee slayer and yeah uh, what what, yeah. are, what are your thoughts on the Archaea spell being like that, where you can literally get one to one? Prayer used to be one of those things where you had to do so many dragons, especially it's, as a hardcore. Yeah, it's broken. But I mean, when you do it, you opt out from using ancient magics, right? So yep. it's not like it's, uh, you know, it sort of there's an equi it's a trade of equivalence. I feel like, yeah, because you're forced to do melee slayer when you decide to do that. Honestly, I kind of like that progressive view of the game where we don't have to like sit in the quote unquote caveman days and just be really dogmatic about like, okay, prayer needs to continually be super, super, super slow and herb lore needs to be super, super, super slow. No, no, no. And crafting yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad they're coming around and just realizing like, and I used to be a part of Olympus yeah. and I remember being in like the discord talks of people, to, you know, being very very like stern on no never increase the xp rates of this and i understand that point of view if as if you're like a purist in this game and you want to keep things you know kind of old school but i like that they've for example i think one of the best updates they ever came out with was like sandstone and giant seaweed i just thought that was yeah. so much better yeah, than just hopping worlds at charters it just 100 percent yeah it, it, just, it just feels more part of the game now and they still mm -hmm. kept it they didn't they didn't go too far with it where they just released like a deposit of sand where you just sit there and like redwood it you know yeah um they, uh, they kind of kept the charm of the old school nature of it but they yeah allowed some that's, other methods. that's a very good point yeah the rs3 solution would have been to add something you click every five minutes and the sand <laughs> goes directly into your bank <laughs> Yeah, you're right. They really did uh, deliver on like an old school solution. To yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. For I, sure. I like it. Um, Herb lore as well has just been pretty good. I'm, I, dude, I, I gotta say, I'm grateful that they haven't added any more herb patches. Uh, and I really hope they never do. Uh, I feel like they're aware on that because we didn't get one in Prif either, where it would have made perfect sense yeah, from yeah. like, uh, I think it was purely because there would have been too many of them. <laughs> Dude, like, you already have to go to 10 like mm. like it's just it's aggressive um, and so i'm glad yeah. I, I hope they realize like okay we're good i mean i think I, they're aware otherwise there would have been a or patch in proof yeah if yeah, you yeah think you're, about right. It. you're right uh because i swear man like this is a personal issue but when the farming guild came out i got so overwhelmed with farming i literally burnt out of it <laughs> I started burning out because there's just too much farming. It's like to the yeah. point where you start feeling bad if you're not just constantly farming. And back then, the fucking uh, seed rewards were OP as fuck. You were getting like fucking 50 in Iriot seeds per package or something. Like hard contract yeah. reward. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this broken. And... I I, w I was so burnt of farming at that point, so I didn't even take advantage of it. So I w I've always struggled with snake grass seeds, but the people that went really hard on contracts uh at first stacked up like mm. thousands of snake grass yeah that's out. me <laughs> <laughs> i regret that yeah i see but um yeah i don't know if there's ever going to be any more like patches because at this point you know i doubt it there will probably probably be some farming updates i would assume they're going to eventually come out with some like s not super not ultra but like quantum 
quantum compost mm. that just prevents your herbs from ever dying. I hope we get I, something like that. I don't know if you're aware, but recently in RS3, they made a change where... Uh, so PVM doesn't doesn't drop like herb crops anymore. They used to drop a lot of grimy or clean herbs from mm. different bosses, but now they just uh, they reworked it in a way where it doesn't drop any of them, and instead it drops seeds. So you're like made to farm more. But in they also added an update where now you can put like multiple herb seeds per one patch, and you get like a multiplied yield when you uh, harvest Ooh. them later. See that that is really cool, and they could even make yeah. it so like you know the second seed you put down is only like a point seven x or whatever, and then the third seed is like point five. So it's not like you're just constantly getting like just multiple. Yeah, but I think they're putting like in uh, six seed as ones, and it is actually six times multiplied <laughs> compared to putting in one seed. So dude, that yeah. is see that that would have honestly been a better way to go but now the fact that we already have 10 patches like if they had just never added any herb patches and kind of like decided to go down that route where like we we keep the same like five or six patches we've always had mm. and just went th down that route because then then farm runs wouldn't take a fucking year to do like they feel like such a yeah but I, how would they do it like imagine if you're picking six seeds worth of herbs from one <laughs> they'd That's have to increase like... the like herb yeah. sack uh the, like the herb sack to like expand beyond 30 herbs or something you, just... you use an herb sack in your farm runs i do now i, I used to never do it uh, i've so i've just started getting back on my herb runs literally yesterday after like six months of not doing a single one um part of the it, it is actually kind of efficient to bring an herb sack but you just use it temporarily like if if you have a crazy patch that goes hard instead of running to the leprechaun you just deposit them quickly and then on your next patch you release them and then you clean them and use them on the next right okay yeah okay. so it's that, like kind of efficient but you okay that it, i can get behind but some people they like deposit their herbs like crime in their bank which is trolling because yeah. then you've traded off like cleaning the herbs zero time yeah. during the farm run to having to commit time to cleaning them or mm -hmm. money and lose the xp mm -hmm. that's why i never liked the herb uh, herbs extract but what you said is uh, that makes sense as long as you are cleaning them yeah they're right. all clean by the end of the run but i'm yeah, trying that, to be like really yeah. efficient with my like saving the few ticks i can here yeah no that, that's smart i feel like then you yeah. that's a good solution and a good way to use it in a way without uh, trolling yeah <laughs> i know you get those people with just thousands and thousands of grimy herbs i i have to clean mine uh, like i do get grimy herbs in my bank obviously from pvm and other stuff Mm -hmm. uh and like miscellanea and i i don't ever want an herb sack to go beyond even like 500 because it just becomes yeah. as soon as you've gotten to that point you're like okay this is actually gonna be a fucking chore to do yeah that. that's true it's also nice if you're like uh i don't know i'm pretty systematic with my banking so if i clean all the herbs that i farmed but the ones i get from pvm are grimy i can tell in my bank like when i look at my herbs that uh Okay, so these are the ones I got from killing things, and these are the ones I farmed myself. And uh, I don't know, you don't really need that information for anything, but to me, that's like cool. Mm. Kind of. Yep. I'm. I just realized my game sounds wrong because I got a quiz master, and I can hear the little ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good luck on the the baguettes from that one, right? Yeah. Let's see if I get my second baguette. Sure. I got a bucket. Motherfucker. Um, okay. okay, now now I finally muted my noise. People are probably like <laughs> hearing the faint sound of me fishing carambons, but it, now it's now. It's oh weird. yeah, it's fine. The one thing I forgot to do, I always check my game sounds and everything, but no, it no, is no. what it is. Yeah. Um. So there was a topic on Twitter. I'm gonna go here real quick. Um. By Sakon, and he asks, "What experiences do you remember shaping the trajectory or changing your path?" I guess an IRL and maybe a part mm -hmm. of it's got to relate to the game as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, honestly, there's like a few things that are big in a way where they like literally changed my direction in life. One of them, or like the biggest one, would be like in my early twenties. So in Finland, we have to we have mandatory military service, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're 18, you're, you are required as a man to serve uh, six, nine or 12 months, depending on what occupation you get in the army. And uh, 
like all other uh, my friends, uh, after high school, I went to serve. And uh, during uh, army, I uh, applied to what is it? like a vocational school, I think, a vocational university. Uh, for automation technology engineering, right? And I got in. So after the army, I went there. But as I was studying it in my early 20s, I, I was kind of like, yeah, this is not for me. I, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And by the second year, I just completely burned out and I dropped out because it was not what I wanted to do. And from that, I was kind of like completely lost for like a year. I didn't know what I want to do with my life. Uh, I was like kind of depressed, I guess, like just even just sitting at the computer playing games wasn't doing it for me. I was like smoking all of weed, which was amplifying maybe that uh, depression even and the feeling of not wanting to do anything and not knowing what to do. And eventually it led into like trying psychedelics. Uh, started with acid. Uh, I ended up also trying mushrooms and DMT later, but uh, I don't know, like I started pushing my acid trip uh, dosages from like the very beginner stuff to like deeper and deeper and deeper because I wanted to experience my ego dying mm -hmm. and uh, man, I experienced some insane stuff during that and uh, I know you've had some recent experiences with these too, and much like you, I also had like a very bad trip that led into me uh, realizing that uh, these things are not like uh, they're not toys, and uh, they can be very dangerous for the mind. And uh, I kind of uh, got my shit together during one of the trips and uh, decided that from this day onwards, I'm going to be sober and uh, so on, so forth. But one of the trips before getting to this point, I actually, I don't know what happened, but one thing led to another. And I discovered that uh, programming is really interesting to me, just writing code and shit like that. And uh, uh, I did a bit of that. And later on, I looked how to, like, uh, if there is a degree in my area that I could apply to, which is the computer science I ended up applying for and through Open University and getting a spot on the course for next year. and. Uh, that's the thing I'm getting my master's in, hopefully next year now. So that had an insane impact on my life. And it like, I feel like the, the different mindset that I could have during my tripping and thinking about my life in a different way than what I usually do really kind of saved me from the pit I was in. Uh, and I was kind of able to find some direction again that I wanted to work towards and have goals to, to achieve. And yeah, I feel like that, that was definitely so far the most important moment in my life. Cause I don't know where I would be without that right now. It's like that meme. I, I've seen this meme where, uh, um, it was on like some psychedelic subreddit or something when I was just browsing it. And it was this meme of like saying like when uh, like your your parents telling you to stop doing drugs and it shows a picture and then it's like your friends telling you to stop doing drugs and then it's like yourself telling you to stop doing drugs and the final <laughs> yeah. one's like the drugs telling you to stop doing <laughs> drugs. <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So uh, it, it's interesting because like you know a lot of people. Um, I'm assuming most people listening to this at least kind of heard the news of what had happened to me. Um, on my mushroom trip, my, my, my last one. Mm -hmm. And like, it was, it was just like the craziest thing. And it like really taught me that like, again, like, as you said, like these are not toys, these, like your mind is so, it's so vast. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. actually like, it's, it's almost mind boggling how crazy a trip can become. Yes, for sure. Yeah. It's like, how did, how did I even get to this point? Like, it's so weird because like, you'll just be tripping and you're having a, a time and then it's like, you are out of this universe. I mean, you're just in this mm. weird limbo and, um, it's, it's weird though, because like I, I, I get asked now and I'm, I'm not going to be that guy that's like, just 
you know, no, like now that I've had a bad experience and now that I'm not doing drugs anymore, nobody, nobody else should do drugs, you know, because it's bad. Or whatever. Yeah, because, that's cringe. Yeah. Because like, I really did have some really fascinating um, epiphanies sure. and like things mm -hmm. that really actually benefited my life from them. Yes, I agree. But I don't know if you were anything like me where there was a time where you're almost already being told by, for me, it was the mushrooms or whatever it was, whatever substance it's like. It starts kind of telling you, like, okay, you're done. Like, you've learned your lessons. Stop yes. doing this. But yes. if you resist it and you keep doing it, it's just going to kick your ass. You're yeah. Gonna, you're going to have a point I, where you are, you actually get told, like, okay, this is actually, like, the end. Yeah. Like, I, I should stop now. For me, I, like, acid was way more manageable than mushrooms. I don't know if you've done it. Yeah, I've never like. done it. So there's like a comparison, uh, usually people say, where with acid, it's like you're go you're on a rocket ship going to the fucking moon, right? And it's going really fast, but you're in the cockpit. You're kind of in control of things. Mm. But with mushrooms, you're like strapped into the front of the rocket, right? <laughs> and it just goes and you have like no fucking control on what's happening. Yeah. You just, you're just, you know, you just have to go to the moon. Yeah. And it's just going to happen regardless of if you want it or not. And... Obviously, smaller dosages are much more manageable, but yeah. it got to a point where I just wanted to push it and push it and constantly like experience new stuff. Mm -hmm. And eventually I wanted to like, uh, I think they call it the heroic dose with mushrooms. Uh, we have the, what are they called? They're called Siloki in Finnish. They're like the most potent fucking psychedelic mushrooms on the planet, I think. Mm -hmm. They only grow in the Northern Hemisphere, if I've understood correctly. And I ate like fucking five grams of them or something. And holy fuck, dude. I am convinced that night I died. I went to hell and I was like reborn. <laughs> and after that, I have not touched any psychedelic substance. And I don't think I'm still ready to do it. And it was like <laughs> seven years ago at this point. I'm the, the, one of the one of the best experiences from that experience if i could find silver linings was the amount of messages and the amount of like really wholesome messages i got privately of people just saying like hey man you're not alone like what you experienced like i've i've experienced something very similar mm. and like you'll learn yeah. from this and um because it 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 felt i don't know like i'm with you so i the trip before the one that i went live on um, where I literally just, I, I, th I felt that just urgent need to get help. Like I needed like medical. That's what I felt like. I felt like I needed help. Like that's the only thing I could feel because I felt like I was yeah. in this. I didn't know how to explain it and I didn't think it was ever going to end. That That's the worst feeling is like that yeah. feeling of like purgatory where you're just yeah. like locked I, in. I know that feeling. And that's why you need a trip sitter when yeah. you are doing heavier doses because the job of the trip sitter is to pull you out of that negative loop. Yep. And that's what my friend did to me during the mushroom trip. He like, uh, my brother, like my parents were away for some uh, vacation or something and I was just home with my brother and my brother had a friend over or something. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling my brother, you have to call my friend over. You have to call my friend over. Because he was the one I was doing these psychedelic experimentations with. And I was like uh, panicking in this very negative state of mind. I was like constantly worried that, oh my God, I am so fucked up. There is no fucking way I can go to work in the morning and stuff like that. Yep. And then eventually he showed up and he started calming me down. And he was my anchor to like mm. actual reality and like pushing away the negative thoughts and eventually he like completely turned my trip around into something enjoyable which is the rebirth part of the death that yes. i experienced it was uh certainly an interesting thing because like you said you just keep doing it and pushing the dosage until like you get to a point where the psychedelics sit you the fuck down and they oh. show you who's boss you know and they're like you don't fuck with me dude and dude, it's I so experienced true. that and it's like <laughs> Jesus Christ man. I still remember very clearly how it felt like dude so the I I didn't I don't think I mentioned this but um like I don't think I mentioned this publicly because I don't I, there, there there's never been a need to mention you know what happens in any of my trips but because mm. you had mentioned like you going to hell and then having that rebirth so mm. the trip before my last one um it was about like three weeks prior and uh, 
that was the first time I felt like I, I felt like I was dying, but I felt like I was going to go to hell. That that feeling of like, okay, like you you have chosen all these bad paths. You decided to do drugs with your life. You decided to like not do these <laughs> things that you know you're Boy. supposed to do. <laughs> and so and so and of course I have this um like I have it, it's interesting because I've been reading a lot of books. Uh, one of the latest audiobooks I listened to was uh, it's called the denial of death by Ernest Becker. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's really deep and it's really like philosophical. But one of the chapters was kind of talking about this, like if you're born into a, a religion, like that is stuck with you for life, basically. Right. So, so because of my religious upbringing, um, that trip made me feel like, oh, because I left my religion, like this is right. like this is your consequence. You're gonna burn right. in hell for eternity. Right, I see. And it felt so real. It was terrifying. And I didn't your even... mind makes it real. Oh yeah. my God, dude. Like the fucking fear. And I just remember the, and there was no rebirth, by the way. It just the trip ended kind of. And I never got that like a just that conclusion. No, it was like <clears throat> and so that was already the signal that I needed to stop, but I felt this um, urge that, like, no, like, this was not the, like, I need, I need closure on this. Like, it didn't feel like I got that closure because I wanted to kind of stop at that point, but, like, it, it just right. felt like such a shitty way to end <laughs> that, like, I, I, like, it felt the need to do it again. And, of course, the next time it sat me the fuck down. Like, no, like, you don't need, like, this is your closure, bitch. Like, you fucked up. Yeah. So, like, yeah, here, exactly. here, here you go. But um, yeah. yeah, it's fascinating the, how that, that works. Mm, just uh, by the way, me yeah. talking about hell and rebirth earlier, I don't really, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in anything, but like that's how I would describe it anyway, the, what I experienced. That's so weird. So, so just expanding on that, do you feel more spirit? Like how do you feel about uh, life and how do you feel about like mm, life after man. death because of your psychedelic experiences? It was insane. Like I completely lost like the sense of like self during it, and I just felt like I was connected to it. like this is this sounds like such fucking hippie shit now, but I don't really know how else to put it. I felt like I was one with everything, and I as an individual like ceased to exist, and it was like a really fascinating feeling because I was like hundred percent convinced that that is the case. Obviously, though it's not, but like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I haven't really, well, I have thought about life after that a bit, but I'd imagine it would be like life before birth in a way. It just, it's not there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is there when you read the history books and shit and stuff like, obviously it is there before you and it will be there after you. But from like your point of view, that's not true. Life only exists while you are alive, and after you die, it's like it might as well not. Yeah, it's. I feel like that's how I feel about it. No, I, I agree, and I've I've had that overwhelming experience of like there is a universal consciousness that you you are nothing, you mean nothing, and everything's mm -hmm. one. All life is one, mm -hmm. and like it's very fast, and it feels so real like it's the realest feeling you've ever yeah. felt and then you get out of yeah. it and you're like what the am i going crazy like why yeah. did that feel so and and that's like a universal theme i feel like when people do those yeah. heroic doses and i feel like heroic dosing into that state of mind is kind of like using uh cheat cheating into achieving what people that are on like the peak of meditation can can achieve because yeah. i imagine it's like a similar state of mind but you can do it without the state of like without the use of these substances that like kind of force your mind into that uh, that place if you open your mind and like let it happen so yeah no i i agree mm. it is like a hack it's like okay you're not gonna yeah. get the full like you didn't work toward this you're just getting it and you're gonna mm. get your ass kicked if you keep doing it you know yeah um did you ever have like any moment during your trips where you felt like the strong urge to like and now now of course you did have like some things that kind of changed the course of your life somewhat but did you ever have like a, a trip like by the end you just felt this immediate urge to like not do what you were doing and to like completely shift yeah so things? that actually like i i was talking about weed earlier and i actually when i was younger i used to have like a problem with it now thinking back on it 
when you smoke weed, obviously you say, "Oh, it's not a problem, Bo. I can stop any time I want." But obviously, that's not the case. <laughs> and uh, I was in this loop of like, uh, weed had become this thing to me where it was so like mentally relaxing. The the whole process leading up to smoking, where you you grind your weed, you roll it into a joint, you know. You use your tongue to seal it shut and then you go out, you walk to some nice place and you smoke it there. And that's pretty much the end of my fun. Everything after that, I I didn't even find it enjoyable, like actually being high and shit. And But I still I kept finding myself going back to buy more just to enjoy everything that leads up to that. And then as soon as I'm high, I start feeling regret for doing it again. And it was just this really unenjoyable negative loop that I couldn't get out of. And the way I did end up getting out of it was during one of my assay trips, I just realized I fucking hate weed. I don't want to do it again. And I stopped. And it literally just like that, I, I stopped it there. It's like there was no withdrawal symptoms, yep. no urge to do it again, nothing. It just stopped there. And that's amazing to me, but it happened. It's so, uh, th dude, what you said is like exactly where I'm at. So that, that end of, so that um, mushroom trip that happened, that was mixed with weed, basically. Oh, yeah, so, so, yeah. so even So even though it was like, it, it wasn't even a heroic dose of mushrooms. It was just, right. a, it was a moderate dose, but because of the, like the, the mixing of it, it led me yeah. to, my mind went crazy, but... Um, I had had already experiences with psychedelics telling me to stop using right. weed completely. And like I was mm. at the same point with you where it's like the idea of vaping this weed was always just a great feeling of just doing it. But then as soon as I did it, it was just constant negative feelings of like, why am yeah. I doing this again? Mm -hmm. Like I just ruined my whole day again. Like I'm just sitting yeah. here camped out and now I'm fucking just ravenously yeah, hungry anything. and just done anymore yeah. during the day and like yeah i feel that it's nice to hear you've had the same experience oh i bet so many people have had it and so yeah sure. and, and that was always waiting because i had had like these psychedelic experiences like telling me to stop but then as soon as i became sober i was like oh you know like whatever i was just feeling that way in the moment because of drugs or mm. whatever but right. I always kind of wanted to have like what you said an experience that really just sits you down and like okay you're done but yeah. I realized after this last trip, like, I don't need that. I've already, I can already decide on my own right now in sober reality that I can just be done with everything. I can just be done, enjoy my life sober, just. Dude, it actually, having those bad experiences makes being sober so fucking oh. enjoyable. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> holy oh, shit yeah. like being sober starts being like you're like on drugs because it feels so fucking good having like a clear mind constantly being able to do things like your arms go where you want it to go as fast as you want it to go and all this stuff like holy fuck it felt nice dude and i i feel like i'm still feeling that way like i i still <laughs> am enjoying being sober because of the experiences i had almost like seven years ago or something by this point yeah, I'm I'm totally with you. I'm glad like I had the experience I had even though I reg it's it's a regretful experience. I still am glad I had it cuz it taught me a lot and like I I could never explain everything that went on in that trip because like like you said like so many things are happening. So but, many things. But yeah. the feelings like internally just it was su such a decisive moment to be like okay, like we're done. I can live my sober life. And that's what always what I was craving to. I was always just craving to just stop this stuff. But yes. It was just such a like a, a habit forming thing where it's like, nah, mm. just get back into it because of little triggers here and there. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's definitely. Good. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That you really are looking for like the, <laughs> like the meme says the last stage that the drugs are telling you to stop <laughs> using drugs. Like you, it's really hard to do before you reach that point because your mind is not satisfied before you yeah. like reach the realization but i feel like it can go one of two ways here either you have the experience we do did or the drugs consume you and you keep doing them and you lose yourself forever and i've noticed that happening in some of my friends uh. that are not really my friends anymore uh what happens is that they become dependent on these experiences and they start thinking of themselves as some like higher being that doesn't have an ego 
but what they don't realize is like they start having an ego over not having an ego, which leads into them like looking down on other people that are not in this. Uh, they don't like have these experiences yep. and they think of them as like sheep or something. And at that point, it's over. There is no way a person like this could ever like uh, function in a society anymore. And uh, sure, some people find it uh, that to be a good thing. But personally, I feel like... Uh, that's not a good thing it's not, it's not what i would want to do at least i would want to like uh contribute to society and then you can also leech things off of it because you contributed to it kind of thing and that would for me personally lead to lead to a more happier life than like looking down on others constantly thinking i'm like better than them and i don't know i lost many friends to this phenomenon and uh it's really sad and I'm really glad that it didn't happen to me or you. Yeah. That's so interesting. Like you, yeah, I feel like you've, you're like pretty wise with this kind of stuff because I, I do actually remember feeling that like the first time I had done mushrooms, like the first few times I remember thinking like this really distinct thought, like, man, like everybody should try, like everybody should like feel this, you know, that was yes. like the initial thought, like, like yes. anybody that hasn't experienced this has never like truly transcended, like what mm -hmm. is sober reality, you know? And, yep. and, and I didn't get like in people's faces or anything, but I do remember that feeling and I remember sharing it, you know, on like in, in public of just like, I just remember thinking there was no real like consequences because I really hadn't really done much research into it. That was like the negative right. stuff. I was searching for the positives. And so right. yeah. me having all these really beautiful positive experiences made me feel like, why is this stuff like illegal? And why is this stuff mm. being like, you know, like why, why doesn't everybody try this? Cause if like everybody tried this, I remember just really remembering like if everybody tried this, like the world would be such a better place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like that kind of path of ego of like you thinking you're kind of like better than people for not having it, having had these experiences. I do remember yeah, feeling that and lightly. That, that is why it is illegal to do that. Because if something like that was legal and everyone was just doing this and having these experiences, nothing would work. <laughs> Fucking know. shops wouldn't be restocked with stuff. <laughs> Fucking water wouldn't come down from the tap internet wouldn't work none of this would be a thing if everyone's just getting high on mushrooms and that's it fucking uh, like staring at the water and imagining that it's like some dimension of to another or a gate to another dimension or something like it's just it's too easy to get lost in them and the the real problem is that once you get lost in them it's very hard to fix it anymore like you have to kind of back out from it at the point where we both of us did yeah because if you keep pushing it further it's like it's very hard to bring your mind back from that i think it can be done but i haven't uh, it just gets more challenging friends, yeah the friends i lost to it they're not my friends anymore and i don't really want anything to do with them and i feel bad uh, uh, sometimes I even feel guilty about it, even though, like, uh, even without me, this probably would have happened to them anyway. But you know, it's I. I used to be like a big advocate for you know make all of this shit legal. Why isn't like weed legal? It should be sold in shops and shit. But yeah. after all these experiences I've had, I don't really necessarily think that way anymore. Yeah, it's strange. Just even after like my six month little adventures with it i i now i remember this feeling of like not trusting the government because like why why, <laughs> why, why would this stuff be like this but now yeah. it's like almost at the point where like okay like i've i've lost that like conspiratory kind of mindset i'm like okay this actually makes a lot more sense now mm, that the, all these does, things are, yeah. are regulated and criminalized and stuff you know like it, it makes a lot more sense to me now. But actually. it is definitely like super fascinating. And I think it would be 100% in our interest as humans to like uh, research this stuff further. Because right now, because of the status it has, I don't think much research is being done on psychedelics. It's like a taboo. See, so in Oregon where I live, it's decriminalized. It's one of, I'm right. pretty sure it's like the only or one of the only states in America that's where it's 
or uh, mushrooms, at least psilocybin mushrooms are decriminalized. Right. But um, yeah, I actually do think there is a lot of benefit to it, but it needs to be very yes, regulated be and resp- it needs to, there needs to be so much um, safety and you know mm. precautions made and stuff because yeah. the, now there are like uh, therapy places being brought up here where you know you can be in a medical setting and and take these substances right, and yeah. actually like get benefit mm-hmm. from it rather than just going alone right yeah so it, it's it's so weird like it, the whole thing feels like a paradox because like i want to say like it, it's almost like i'm so grateful that i had the experience i had because some of the time you just need like the experience yourself to really oh, just yeah 100 percent. i agree yeah. i'm really glad that i did all the things that i did even though they were terrifying and <laughs> things I wouldn't like recommend someone to do, but I'm glad that I, I yeah. did those things because without doing those things, I wouldn't be here in the situation I'm in right now. And I'm happy right now. And I used to not be happy back then. So I feel like that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It ended up working out even though it was a bit terrifying at times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, sure. I'm glad, uh, like, others including yourself and you you seem to have had all these experiences and now that you're like you know seven years done with it it feels like you can really have a conversation that's objective and not just like right yeah yeah. true like smoke weed man it's i'm still doing it like it's fun like yeah no i'm not oh my god (laughs) it's not addictive (laughs) man i'm fucking smoking Uh, (laughs) any time i want to (laughs) yo let me just take a rip real quick yeah okay yeah yeah, I'm 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 grateful for the experience of that. And I'm you know, I also got to say like I think part of the reason I'm also grateful is because I never did it when I was a kid. Like I I lived my entire childhood uh completely sober and even my the first oh, yeah. half, the first half of my 20s, you know, just complete. I felt yeah. like I almost needed these experiences because I just mm-hmm. you know, I I I never like experienced it, but now I'm grateful that just in a in adulthood with a fully developed frontal lobe, I could have had these experiences and just been more right. as an adult with them. So I'm actually, I have a very similar situation on her head. Like when I was a kid growing up, I never like I, from the beginning, I despised the idea of tobacco when my friends were trying it out in like elementary primary school. And then I didn't like drinking at all. I tasted alcohol once and because it tasted horrible, I never like drank it again mm-hmm. in, primary school high school and i just never got into it and i was always sober until like i tried out weed and uh, yeah then these things but yeah very similar thing for me as well yeah. i think even now i've been drunk for less than less than five times in my life i think and yeah I'm, 20, I'm i'm roughly seven yeah i've smoked like three cigars in my life and i've uh drinking maybe like a maybe two handfuls of times and mm. I don't enjoy any of it. Uh, this is a weird flex, but I've never actually even tasted uh, tobacco or like tried it. And I don't think I will ever because then I can keep weird flexing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might as well keep the weird flex. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, and, and I've always had that fear of like even smoking one cigarette. Like I'd, I'd enjoy it and then I'd like get into fucking just this horrible, nasty addiction of smoking yeah. cigarettes. Like I don't even want that. I've. Yeah, it's so bad. Uh, low key, I'm a little glad I've had the experience with cigars because you're not actually inhaling it; you're just breathing it in your mouth. Right? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, I, I've never. It's tried still those. It's it can still cause cancer. Um, yeah. But like, I'm glad I had that because it almost taught me like, okay, like this what this is not even something I necessarily enjoy that much, but at least I've done it, and so I don't have that urge of like, you've never done this before, like maybe you should give mm. it a try. <laughs> right yeah true yeah, so. yeah that is definitely i think getting that urge to try things like the way you said it earlier as well i'm also the way where so people are telling that yeah you're you can't do this and you can't do that and this is bad for you and so is this but for the most part i'm the type of person that has to do these mistakes themselves yeah. to know that they're bad to not do them it's not enough for me that someone tells me that you know you can't do that it'll cause harm to you i have to actually cause harm to myself by doing it and then i know not to do it anymore and it's a good and just to kind of also go off of that i i'm skeptical enough to a point but now because i luckily did things that weren't um you know 
physically addictive, I can now act, I've now actually built trust in people saying not to do certain things because I try to lessen right. variant. And so, so now when people, you know, like I've never had the desire to do anything that's like life destroying, you know, heroin, right, yeah. things like yes. that. Like absolutely same, not. Same, same. And yeah. now that I've had these experiences where people already told me not to do these things and I did it and it, it didn't lead me down like a horrible path. I now am way more trusting of information yeah. like that. I'm like, okay, I yes, can kind of trust this right. now. Yeah. So. It's like there was a reason why you can't do it, you know, <laughs> or they want you to not do it. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally. <laughs> I never also had the urge to try anything that you like inject into. Oh, it yeah. always seemed so like, so uh, that's not me. I would never be able to do Fuck something that. like that. Fuck that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, and and basically anything that has already been listed as like this is very addictive. I'm not gonna do yes. it because I don't want that. Like I, absolutely not. We already uh, do the most addictive thing out of all fucking RuneScape. Yeah. <laughs> I already know. I know I get addicted to things. So why would I? Why yeah, would I put exactly. this on myself? And and yeah. then you hear of people. You know, like I always feel bad for people that are like trying to stop nicotine and they really struggle with it. Like I know real life people that have just constantly tried to stop smoking cigarettes and they're one of the just universal themes of people trying to smoke cigarettes is like, I wish I had just never even smoked one once. I bet. Like yeah. That's always what, that's what everyone like, says. Imagine how bad the withdrawals must be that you came in oh. to smoke every time and you just hope that you never had gotten into that loop. Like I, I actually saw like cold one is trying to stop right now and uh, he's actually being pretty successful. I think he tweeted that he's like nine months and two weeks yeah, uh, yep. sober now from smoking and Someone asked him that they want to do it also, and uh, he was describing his experience a bit, saying that the first two days, it feels like fucking ants or something are crawling under your skin. Oh. And then the next three weeks, this kind of shit is happening and so on. And like, it seemed like for like over a month, you struggle very hard before you get to a point where now, as long as you don't cave in, you're like good. But See, holy fuck, it did not seem like an easy thing at all. Yeah, that shit's not good to get into and you hear stories like that. And then the worst part is, is like if you've done it for long enough in your past, even though you can get to a point where you're not suffering with the physical side effects, you still have that psychological like, oh, this person's smoking a cigarette and they look like they're having a good time. Like imagine if I did right. that. So you always have that trigger. Dude, I was talking about this um, on one of my streams and the so i order food on doordash and i wish I've, that that's my other addiction i need to fucking i always have these little like phases where i like, delete all delivery services and then i get it again because i just have that right. little temptation but um one thing i noticed was at least here in oregon they at the end of at the at the end of scrolling a certain restaurant they have alcohol just plastered. oh okay and in fact they're literally giving deals like hey we'll give you 20 percent off if you order alcohol with this Oh, and it's wow. like, holy shit, like, I'm just so grateful I'm not an alcoholic or have any tendencies toward alcohol because, nah, it, like, imagine you are trying to be sober and then you're just getting plastered with ads and every single oh. thing of, like, drink, drink here, drink here, we'll give you a deal if you drink, like, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Dude. It sounds like such an fucking American problem. It's that shit horrible. is not legal in, the, in Europe, I think. Dude, I don't think... I've never seen a delivery app have like any alcohol or it's tobacco. It's everywhere on here. And it's like, I can't even get rid of it. It's not like, at least with like Twitter, if I got like an alcohol ad, not like I would, I, I never even had the desire to get it, but I would just, any gambling, any like DraftKings, any gambling or alcohol, I just always click the little three dots and say, not interested. Like get the, right. get the shit out yeah. of here. I don't care. Yeah. Um, because like, you know, like I know as a human, like I have that subconscious of like, I, if I keep seeing these ads, eventually I'm going to get worn down and I'm going to get like used to it, you know, where it's just like, oh, right, what yeah. if I just try it once or what if I mm -hmm. just do this? Yep. So for sure. Yeah. I feel so bad for people that have like an alcohol problem and not yeah, that that alcohol is everywhere dude. here. It's like testing them even harder. It's fucking like, horrible. Yeah. Fucking uh, capitalism, dude. Just so feeding on people's despair. <laughs> It's so Holy bad. That, that, that's exactly how I see like gambling. And it's yeah. part of the reason. So I've talked to like I had a on the cast and um, we were talking briefly about kick and right. like kick being a streaming service. And like, dude, you go on there 
And like the first thing you see is like strippers and gambling. Like that's like all <laughs> you see in just like Jesus. front page of it is just like, where am I right now? But like the idea of gambling and them pushing it so hard, it's so insanely profitable. Like to get people addicted to gambling, no matter the cost, no matter if you're going to ruin people's lives, just fucking send it because we're going to become yeah, millionaires obviously. by just shoving yeah. the shit down people's throats. If you if you just look at the numbers and you disregard the ruined human life behind the numbers, oh my God. the margins of profit are probably insane. It is out of this world, like the, yeah. the amount of profit they make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. So like I've. Yeah, I uh, I was thinking about it the other day because I, I I always hate to like make a decisive decision about something that's kind of new, but like I'm just like, dude, Kick is I'm sorry, that is a shady fucking platform. It's very shady. It is, yeah, it is, and it seems like a. I mean, I'll hand it to them. Like, if it wasn't for the uh, split they give uh, from subs, right? Most people would probably not even consider it because it would just be a more scuffed Twitch where all the like fucking people who can't operate within the rules of Twitch go. <laughs> yeah. But because the split of subs yeah. is a factor, it's That's actually like yeah. it's insane to think that from you could have so much money from each sub to yourself. That like, is, uh, yeah. That that's part of the reason why, like, I'm I'm trying to give it like a chance. Is like, okay, they're clearly trying to support their creators. They're making an effort. Ninety five five split is out of this world. I don't know how sustainable that is. I don't know when they're yeah, going to change it. Eventually. I mean, it's relying on the people <laughs> getting fucked by gambling. I suppose <laughs> as like a byproduct of uh, the ninety five five sub uh, split bringing streamers to the platform and the streamers bringing people to the platform and then the people getting fucked by gambling. And I guess they did the math and decided that <laughs> we can afford the 95.5 if uh, enough people come here and get fucked by our gambling. Oh my God, it's so bad. Yeah, and like um, it is it is ironic because yeah, I, I think uh, stake.com is what kind of owns Twitter yeah, exactly. Kick. So, so it's obvious what the motives are because of that. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been asked many times actually uh, recently streaming what I feel about Kick and would I consider moving over. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, streaming nowadays for me is like uh, I just hang out with my friends, you know, and yeah. I shoot the shit, you know, talk, listen to good music and stuff like that. And I don't really stream for money anymore. And uh, that's made streaming fun for me. When I want to stream, I stream and it's always fun. Back when I was streaming full time and like a money factor was uh, an important part of it, it changed streaming for me completely uh, towards the direction I didn't really like. Because you're stressed for money and you have to go live every day whether you're feeling good or not. And uh, totally. I don't know. No. And I feel like the motive to going to Twitch would only, I mean, to kick would only be money and I would lose what actually makes streaming fun for me uh, or it would be worse because I can't assume that all of my, you know, regulars and the uh, good friends I've made along the streaming journey would like all come there for me. And I, I feel like it would just be like a lose lose situation. And the chat experience is much worse. Yeah, yeah I bet. they have like no emotes and it's just right feels feels different mm. um yeah no you're you're not alone in that feeling of like because i remember first starting off streaming that's all you do it for it's just fun it's like that's you want yeah, it to the, exactly the, the whole reason people get into streaming is like oh this sounds fun now some people obviously just do it for the money off the bat, but like which is which is fine. I mean, it's, there's nothing there's, wrong with that. It, yeah, it's, we'd be lying by saying like I am. Uh, there is no part of me that wants the money from this, but like mm. it, a lot of it was really just the fun. But then when it becomes like you become kind of reliant on it, like I'm expecting a paycheck, which naturally yeah. occurs. Then it then it starts becoming mm. stressful. Yeah, exactly, and then. Uh, in Finland, we are very blessed. We students get paid. Uh, we get around, I don't know, like between five and seven hundred euros every month that we never have to return to anyone. It's just like welfare support to help us uh, live during our studies and pay our rent. And then on top of that, we have the student loan, uh, which has a very affordable interest rate 
it's like the most cheap loan you can get in Finland. And I because of my imagine. situation, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And because of my situation, the money from Twitch was always something, you know, that could help me with groceries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it was never like mandatory for me. I yeah. could always get by even without it. Uh, and I don't know. I just, uh, at some point I realized instead of pushing and being so stressed doing this for money, I could just do this for fun, finish my fucking degree and get a job that I do for money. And that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm like, I'm way less stressed doing this now. Yeah. And there's something to be said about having like a consistent income and just doing the doing exactly. like just yeah. doing work that you can enjoy. Not like it's the thing you absolutely want to do, but just having a schedule, going to work, uh, answering to somebody and just like, OK, like this is my job and I'm going to get paid. Yeah. And it. so many like worries are dealt with by yeah. doing that. Like you, your health insurance is covered. You're like you have a. A stable income every month that you can rely on being the exact same every one month yes. regardless of like if you get sick and you get like vacation and shit like that and people meme a lot how streaming is so fucking easy but in reality if you're not like one of the top absolute top dogs who get to the point where money is literally just a number to them it doesn't matter it, it's not easy dude. it's like yeah. very mentally taxing thing and you have like no time off because whenever you're off, you're basically losing subs or yeah. it's rough, dude. And nothing yeah. gets, you don't get health insurance. I know. You, Jesus you, Christ. You, know. you don't get, uh, you know, you're not putting money towards a pension. No. You're not gathering any kind of like experience where if one day there is no more Twitch, all this time that you've put into this something it can be like, uh, to your benefit somewhere else and you like yeah. i just I, I got to the point where i was like holy fuck if i ever do this for anything but uh fun I, I i'm just deleting my time straight up unless i get to the point where i'm like one of the like you get to the point where foe or boat is for example yep. Yep. right yeah it's 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 an interesting thing because i i think about if i was just a streamer the stresses would be so much higher. I'm grateful like I moved to YouTube earlier on. Right, yeah, true. Cuz like even though YouTube's sort of like a similar thing where it's just like creating content, you don't have that like stress of like maintaining or like okay, I need yeah, to be live 100%. right now and and a lot of the videos are kind of like retroactive, so like Sure, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, yeah, the, if you go into the content creation, you should like have more than one egg in your basket and YouTube yeah. does that for sure. And you were smart for trying to uh, starting to push uh, that platform and content there and doing the cast and the rambles and shit like that. It's a, it was a very smart move from you since this is what you want to do. Yeah, I try to push other cre like people that are like full time creators and are only streaming like I just I'm like, dude, like, I'm not even like a big YouTuber, but it has helped so much with just my peace sure. of I mind bet. of just like, I okay, bet. I have another platform. Not everything's all, not all my eggs are in one basket. And on top of that, it's like a different creative out, uh, like a, a different creative outlet that right. if you're not feeling of doing live content, you can just put out a video and it's, yeah. it feels yeah. like you're still being a creator. Yeah. You're doing the smart way of things for sure. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you were smart to do that since this is what it. you want to do. Yeah, that that was another thing. Just to briefly for the last little bit, just go back into the psychedelics. Uh, right. One, yeah. of, one of the trips I did feel was like, truly, this is what I want to do. And I, I uh, was taking it for granted for like a couple of years where it was like mm. I wasn't appreciating what I had built you know quite, without sounding like arrogant about it. it's like no i, I get what you yeah think. like yeah. you just you build an audience and then when you start taking it for granted it feels like you're not giving it your all and it's like a really it's just depressing to realize yeah. that you, you you took all this time into it and now you're not enjoying yeah. like, the fruits of it yeah and so exactly. like one of those trips was like dude like this is really what you want to do and you're not taking advantage of it so yeah and you become like this you become a different person than what the audience started watching in the first place yeah yeah kind yeah. of thing and uh, it's not good okay um 
Topic from Oreo asks, what is your favorite trance song slash artists? The real go-to artists mm. you find enjoyable no matter what. Man, dude, this is not an easy one. <laughs> I like uh, I like like a certain type of trance, but for me, the what is my favorite song is and shit is like constantly changing. Like recently, I broke up from my first ever relationship, uh, or we broke up rather, in uh, around New Year's. We had been together for a year, and uh, trance was my escape like my therapy it saved me and there was a there was this one song paul denton's remix of uh what's it called again sun will rise again yeah holy shit i had it on repeat i was crying listening to it and i felt all these emotions and it just carried me i feel like and uh, i i'm still listening to it to every now and then and uh really powerful song beautiful trance song Apart from that, um, I always go back to the songs that got me into trance in, in the first place. I've always been a very musical person. Uh, since I was a kid, I used to play guitar. I loved Metallica, Guns N' Roses. I learned pretty much all of their songs and some of the solos on guitar. And I played it for like 10 years or something until in high school, um, there was the... <laughs> the dubstep sensation where Skrillex kind of put out his uh, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites album and everyone just started listening to dubstep and that's where I made the transition from like traditional like band based music rock heavy metal like that into dubstep and I, I had this dubstep phase for like a year until then I transitioned into trance uh, after hearing Tiesto's Elements of Life, uh, Tiesto's Adagio for Strings, uh, Armin Van Buren's Sail, and Gaia Tuban. And these songs to this day are very powerful me, to me because I still remember very clearly, clearly how it felt like uh, hearing them the first time and the kind of story they told. And it was like this amazing sensation which got me into trance. And here I am fucking... <laughs> 10 years later and I still don't see myself ever starting to listen to something other some other genre but uh, yeah that's what I would say I guess it's a very uh, complex question because like I said my the songs I really enjoy are constantly changing mm -hmm. but those four are probably something that uh, I will always remember another one is Craig Connolly's Black Hole I was all that also really helped me during uh, some depression I was experiencing in high school. It would be like my uh, a song I would listen to, like without exceptions, every morning when I was in the bus going to school. I would listen to it. It became like a part of my morning ritual kind of thing. Damn. And, uh, All reliable, yeah. Craig. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, Craig, dude. Yeah. Um, that's cool. I. I think because of you and because of a few other streamers, I think it was mainly you because we started becoming friends on, as streamers mm. uh, and we were both listening to trance. I had like kind of, I was still listening to other things and then I really got into a trance phase for a couple of years where it was just everything was right. trance. Um, I started drifting away from like the uplifting trance though and I started getting into more like old school yeah you like the old stuff which i also adore i love the old mm -hmm. stuff as well yeah the classics there's like this other genre i can't i always want to just say it's progressive trance but it i i feel like trance doesn't do it justice it's like that early 2000s sort of like techno progressive but it's not techno i can't say it's techno it's like it's weird but um i have like this album and i actually just listened to it like this past week again i'm like fuck like i haven't listened to this stuff in like half a year and now i'm like really motivated to like what? rebuild that playlist what album is it and what can you give me some song examples i'll just i'll just link you the playlist real quick uh and you can just scroll through like just look at like the first like 20 oh. um but it's basically like i a lot of the songs actually have come from uh, this YouTube channel called, uh, I think it's called Progressive Classics. 
uh here's the playlist so if you like go on there and just look at like the first like 30 songs listed it's like a lot of that like early or late 90s or early 2000s just really underground progressive trance it's like super yeah yeah i see so that stuff i really get into and there's something like really just um I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like you know this shit is real. It's just like there's no yeah, e- yeah. there's no there's no ego to the music. A lot of it doesn't even have vocals. It's just like some dude underground, just right. like jamming. very raw yeah. emotion, <laughs> raw as yeah. hell, and it's good. There's no like uh, build ups and hypes and shit. It's yeah. just very raw emotions and melody and yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I like that, but I also I always have to take a break now. I'm getting older where I actually do appreciate other genres. So I try not to burn myself out anymore. So I do I now make multiple playlists because I do have oh. different moods where it's like, okay, I, I need if I'm feeling music, but I'm really not feeling this music, I just need to have a different playlist where I can just zone out and right. not, not burn out of music anymore. Because that's what I used yeah. to end up doing. I, in fact, I'd get to the point where I listened to so much trance, I was actually like not looking forward to my stream because I realized I was going to have to listen to trance. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I, I need to take yeah. a break. <laughs> because, because, because I'm always listening to music off stream anyway. Right, yeah. So listening to my same stream playlist and then streaming it again, I'm like, Jesus, like I need a break. Yeah, for me, uh, I, well, I listen to trans on stream, obviously, all my, always. But off stream, I, I don't usually have my own music on. It's more like watching a stream or something and they are most likely not playing trans. And so I hear other music like that. There's at the end of the day, there's very few genres I actually dislike to the point where I like hate hearing it. Mm-hmm. One is Finnish rap. <laughs> and uh, dude, it's so fucking bad. Holy fucking shit. Uh, another one, I don't really hate it, but like at some point it just became a meme to me how everyone is listening to this some fucking same liquidity drum and bass like playlist or a- mix. A- amen. And amen. Holy fuck, it like molds me when I'm in some stream and suddenly liquidity above and beyond or something like that and it's just whispering the female voice and playing Thank the same you. fucking songs in every fucking... stream. Somebody well, had to say shit. it. Somebody had at to say it. At some that. point <laughs> I started fucking hating drum and bass like I started making it a meme in my stream where, like, uh, I, I from 7TV, I brought over the emote where the volume slider gets pulled all the way down, right? <laughs> I named it D&B, and, then, like, I could, like, express this feeling somewhat through my own stream, memeing it, and holy shit, I, I don't I, know. I made that Sebe but, not trance emote. It's literally, like, yeah, a yeah. please with his ears being plugged. Right. <laughs> So that that pissed off so many people. Like yeah. Jace literally banned it from his stream. Just like you cannot type yeah. that or else you'll get Drum and bass is holy to Jace. Like I, it, I get it, because trans is the same to me, and these yeah. are very subjective things at the end of the day. But holy fuck, I like for a year or something when I was streaming pretty actively, I could not bring myself to watch someone who was listening to drum and bass. It like make me fucking mull. There there holy. like there's clearly um taste involved in dnb like there's there's some good dnb i'm not gonna deny that there's some really great stuff but all, so much of it is over overplayed so much of it is very overplayed and a lot of it is like just not great dnb that's overplayed yeah and yeah fuck like i i get memed like all trans sound the same but that's i feel like that's a meme but to me all dnb at the end of the day most of it does actually sound the same there's no like melody going on it's the fucking beat which is the same in each song which is like present in every song in like majority of the song that people are jamming out to Mm -hmm. every now and then there's some lyrics or some melody but like the most dominant element is the same fucking drum and bass that you hear in the background constantly and i don't know dude, i just i had it fucking coming out of my ears at some point because i was so sick of it holy shit dude so and you, yeah yeah um, i was just gonna uh, extend on that and another genre i uh, i'm not the biggest fan of is like the newer like hard style uh, uh how it sounds kind of thing i'm i like a lot of uh a lot of the older hard style songs actually but the new stuff and the raw stuff is like really bad to me it's like actually close to some migraine inducing yeah. fucking 
Uh, hard styles again i'm going to use that term of walking the tightrope you have a very small margin of making good hard style and it is so fucking small you can just make the worst hard style of all time and yeah. it's and it's very common yeah and then you will still have people blasting in full fucking volume it's so bad and like <laughs> rare books and, and like it's some fucking <laughs> And before oh, yeah. before people are like, well, there's bad trance. A, yes, there is horrible trance out there. Don't get me yeah. wrong. There's some really, really bad trance. So, like, every genre has their bad, you know, stuff. But, um, yeah, yeah there, there's something, like, particularly just, like yeah, you said, headache-inducing about hard Yeah, style. and I have an argument for all the fucking people who pull this card. Well, what about this in trance? Well, let me ask you this. Why... Is there so many hardstyle remixes of trans songs, but there is no <laughs> trans remixes of hardstyle songs? It's true. It's true. Yeah. So, um, you know what? One of the like one of the most magical things about like discovering music, which I gotta I gotta say, I'm really grateful that I've that I'm a streamer and I have. It's almost like part of my job. At least that's kind of what I've put in my mind is like part of my job is finding new music because the music yeah, is a big a, sure. a big part of my stream if you make it a big part of your stream yeah exactly. for sure i i will sign this statement but what's cool about it is like you know when you find a song that's just like you need to keep listening to it it's just incredible yeah. and you're yes, like i will never find a song this good ever again like it's so good uh, yeah yeah and then and then like the next week you find a song that trumps it and it's just like holy shit like that is Oh my god! Like I, I love that feeling of thinking that you found the best music you'll ever find, and then a week later you find another tune that trumps it, and then another tune the next week that's like really. And this is obviously when you're actively hunting for new music, but um, yeah, I think true. that's really part of the the beauty with if you're really getting into music and trying to build a playlist and finding these songs that you you forget that there's really good music that you haven't discovered yet, and when for you sure. discover it, yeah. it's like oh. Yeah, I, I haven't had that feeling in a while. Probably the last time was with the song I was talking about, the uh, Sun Will Rise Again remix, yeah. uh, or Paul Denton remix of it. That, it like, it's really... effort, too. And, of course, like, you, you know, there's only so much of, like, you know, for example, uplifting trance or stuff, like, where you're, you, you have a certain sound you're looking for. There's only a limited amount of it, it feels like. But mm. at least when you start kind of, like, uh, at least when I started expanding on my trance, uh, taste i was able to just find a whole new just like underground scene of like holy shit like all of this stuff is brand new to me and that's like where the excitement comes like oh baby like i get, yeah i'm looking at this youtube channel with 2000 plus songs and i get a obviously there's gonna be all that crappy music but like you find the gold and the poop dude you i'm so sad i didn't i was an adult back in the yeah the 2000 era and, <laughs> like they know. were organizing these uh you know, Sensation Wipe, do you know the event they used no. to organize in uh, Netherlands? Holy fuck, dude. That used to be, like, the place to be. Holy... I can link to you some of the songs that are played there, but, like, that was the... Those are the gigs I would have loved to be into if I could, like, pick uh, pick a gig from the past that I could uh, attend. Yeah. Yeah, I need to... One of the things I kind of regret is not having attended... That not really done much in my 20s besides like trying to grow a stream and having my years right. of depression and stuff but, right. like, but like i really do look forward to um i don't know getting more into like going out and seeing live music i don't feel like i yeah done like I, I used to do that in high school i used to go to like concerts and stuff but it wasn't right. it wasn't for trance at the time yeah i see but i think of like electronic festivals now i'm like dude that would be so nice. i definitely want to do that in my early 30s because I'll, I'll have a stable income and job by then, and uh, which should I think, or I hope, or otherwise I've wasted my fucking time getting a master's <laughs> degree. It'd be more than enough to like travel to other countries, even to attend festivals. Dude, and shit. that's the dream. And I would love to go to. Actually, I was almost, I almost went this summer, but because uh, I didn't like get a summer job and instead decided to just study more during the summer to speed up getting the thesis done. Um, I wanted to go to Luminosity Beach Festival and it, it was very close to happening, but then in the end I decided that 
I, I have to be smart with my money and I have to make the money last until I'm done with uni and, uh, you know, I yeah. have a source of income. And I decided that you now is not the time, so. And you're I, how that, old? I'm 27 now. I'll okay. be 28 in September. Okay, I'm 28 in June. Right, okay. Um, yeah, I'm excited for my 30s. I, I know that's like kind of like a meme, like as soon as you hit 30s, you're like old, you know, and you're like, mm. you're just, but I feel like 20s for the vast majority of people is really just like your learning years and the, yeah, the you're years like, you struggle the mm. most to be Yeah, because you're figuring out who the fuck you are, like uh, exactly. to become like uh, okay with yourself and the cards you have to play in life, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's your 20s. And uh, yeah, I'm also looking forward to the 30s. And I recently, hopefully, I can keep this up. Good. But like a bit over a month ago, for the first time in my month uh, in my life, I picked up like exercising seriously, and I've started going to the gym like three, four times per week. Oh hell and, yeah! Uh, and I want to keep that up because for the first time in my life, holy shit, dude, it feels nice to feel like strong. I didn't know what it feels <laughs> no. like before. And I'm not like strong compared to the other people in the gym, right? Yeah. I'm the one using the bitch weights because yeah. I've I've just started, you know, yep. my journey. But compared to my previous self, holy fuck, I am strong, dude. Holy shit. Dude. I didn't think I could make this much progress in like a bit over a month. But I've become like addicted now to going to the gym. Dude, it gets more addicting too. Like I had my little phase in college where I was working out really consistently and pumping iron. And I didn't take it seriously because like at that point, I just thought like, you know, this is all, it was all about just the vanity of it. Like I just wanted to look good for girls. Right. Like it was just like, okay, like if, if I look good, this girl will be attracted to me. And then, right, you know, yeah. getting into streaming, I literally didn't hit the gym for, you know, three years straight. I would just, mm. occa I'd occasionally do some push ups because I knew I had a, like at least a foundation kind of, but Right. I never took it seriously until this past year. And now, like, bruh, like, especially the beginner gains that come, like, that is always, like, a big motivator. But Yeah, like, my body has solidified so much in just a month. Like, I, I when I want to, like, grab the sides of my stomach, for example, it's yeah. so much harder to do it than, like, a bit over a month ago. <laughs> yeah. and, and I also, I've made some other lifestyle changes too, because in my previous relationship, uh, I kind of discovered a love for cooking food. Mm. Before I had never cooked food, but through like cooking food for someone else and seeing them enjoy what I cooked, I got really into cooking. And uh, I've like, since then I've bought like 20 different sauce bottles and different <laughs> types of sauces from like Asian markets and stuff. Oh, and I have awesome. like 30 different kind of spices and things. And I'm constantly like trying out new stuff. And sometimes it turns out bad, but you know, sometimes it turns out more and then I can make more of it. And like, I've really gotten into cooking and, uh, uh, regarding what you said earlier with the DoorDash stuff, I actually made a New Year's promise to not order food a single time this year and only cook my own food. Let's go. Uh, That's awesome. With a few exceptions. The exceptions are that if I'm with like friends out or something mm. and they want to order, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to say no. So then yeah. I can also order with them. But I must not be the one to like uh, bring up the idea of ordering food. That's really good. That was a, a like a, a shaky resolution I had that I couldn't actually confirm that I was going to do or not. Right. Yeah. I, I, I really did try. It's just really tough when you don't. Because like for me, I enjoy cooking and I enjoy, um, you know, just making stuff on my own. And I love the feel. Because you know, like I always feel better when I don't order food and I'm just making an actual delicious, yeah, nutritious meal. My you day just, like, my day goes yeah. better. But the problem is, is like, I'm not consistent with my routines yet. And to be honest, now that I'm living like life in sobriety, I it just feel it's so much easier to get into a routine now. So yeah, like, that's sure. what I'm building toward. And like the summer's coming up and the weather's getting better. It's like, dude, I just want to, I, I need to like start drilling in these routines. And initially, like in my early twenties, I thought routines and schedules were like for sheep. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's actually not, a cheat not, like, yeah, not like that aggressively, but I was like, dude, like I don't I don't no, want I to feel that. I don't want to feel restricted. I just want to be able to do whatever the hell I want at all times. Yeah, I know.
But now as I get older, I'm like, dude, that, that's what I crave. I just crave yeah. routine. And just The thing with routine and uh, scheduling is that you get so much more done during the day oh, if yeah. you rather than just doing random things whenever you feel like it. Totally. You like, feel like just way sure. more confident in life, too, because you're getting shit done. Yeah, exactly. So And... Uh, yeah, I'm actually four months strong now. Still haven't ordered anything, and I hope I won't either. Like many things went into this decision. Actually, one of them was that I was getting like overweight, in my opinion. I'm 184 centimeters tall, which is, I believe, six feet one in uh, K Kona units. <laughs> I- I'm yeah, not sure. It's up. six feet or six feet one. Uh, yeah, six 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 feet and one half inch. Okay, so. It's like not too bad. I was 100 kilograms. That I don't know what it is in k units. Mm-hmm. But now I've almost lost uh, 10 kilograms. And uh, also, it's not just losing fat. It's also building muscle because I'm going to the gym as well. Yep. And I feel so much better, dude. Like, my, I'm clear-minded. I feel like I have energy during the day. I don't constantly want to, like, nap because I'm eating shit food. That uh, The macros are all wrong. And uh, the other reason is that that the food you order is shit and it's also expensive. Mm -hmm. And especially during the COVID pandemic here, at least, like the delivery prices for food, like tripled, I think. Uh, And the food prices are going up as well. And while all of that is happening, I feel like the restaurants are also struggling to make ends meet. So they're like compromising on the ingredient quality while hiking up the price of the product. So as a consumer, you're ordering overpriced shit food with bad macros, which is getting delivered to you overpriced. And it's like in Finland, we have the problem of it arriving cold as well, because over like around the year, most of the time it's cold here, not warm. We have like a very short summer. Yeah. And it's just a lose, lose, lose scenario. I was like, fuck this. I'm going to cook my own food. I'm going to end up using less money on food. Way less I, money. I'm going to eat better food. And I'm also going to get better as a cook. It was like an absolute no brainer. I just yeah. decided that, yeah. yeah, this is what I'm going to do. That's cool. So uh, do you have any goals for like fitness? Like, do you, do you have like a routine of like, this is where I'm going to the gym. This is kind of what I want to. Or, or is it just you're in the beginning stages where it's like just go and live well, something? Well, I'm fortunate where my one of my uh, like I have a friend group in university that we basically became friends with during our freshman year, and since then uh, we're all studying computer science. We've done like if we're on the same course, we're doing all the group work together. If we're, you know, if I am to meet up someone for drinks in the weekend, it's them or something. And one of them is actually. Uh, they used to be a big uh, gym goer in the high school and then they stopped for a year and then they recently began again and he lives very close to me and the gym we go to is also very close to us so he was like why don't you come and uh, you know i'll show you the ropes you can like uh, copy my routine you can uh, i'll explain to you every move in detail and shit and i've been going with him and he's like helping me out so much he's completely removed the aspect of me having to come up with my own programs or finding out for myself how some moves are done. And he just, you know, holds my hand basically and does it for me. And uh, yeah, I'm really grateful for him. Uh, And uh, the way we are doing with uh, him is three or four days we go. Uh, On one day we do legs and then on another we do shoulder and chest. And then on another we do back and uh, triceps. And then on another we do, he does chest and bicep, but I do shoulder and bicep because he feels like his uh, chest is his weakest element. So mm. he does it twice. But for me, it's definitely shoulders. Uh, I, I've actually had a lot of problems um, just having the mouse in my hand constantly and not having any form of exercise. Like I have a pinched nerve that goes into my right arm and I have all these fucking wrist problems that mm. I've managed to almost eliminate completely just by going to the gym for a month it's insane it's yeah the, i i do remember like early in early on in streaming i remember getting like wrist discomfort never like pain but just like ugh. 
And I remember one of the things I read online because I was like, uh, like, how do I, how do I like get rid of this kind of discomfort? And it was like, just weight lift, like just, just live a, live a, ha live an active lifestyle. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, actually a anything else I could do. Like, yeah. As, but as soon as you start just living an active lifestyle, like all that discomfort mm -hmm. and pain just it's goes just away. Gone. It's so weird because I'm such a fucking idiot for putting up with this pain and discomfort <laughs> and, you know, having a hard time falling asleep for like multiple years. And then I fix it in a month going to the gym, like three, four times a week. Yep. I actually felt like such a fucking idiot for not doing it earlier. Mm -hmm. See, one of the things I'm trying to work on right now is like I want to eliminate sugary drinks and I want to eliminate just I, I want to literally become water only. But the problem is, is like as soon as I do it for a few days, because I'll do it for a few days, I just constantly I'm like, this is so boring. Like I get uh. I, I get literally just bored like of just see. drinking water, you know what I mean? And even though like deep down that's what I really want to do because like I just know it's so much better for me. It's better for my digestive system. It's better for just overall nutrition because you're not going to get as hungry if you're just drinking water, not drinking all these even if it's like sugar free stuff. It's like it still has like those chemicals and um but the problem is is like it's just like the boredom of drinking water only and also I also want to eliminate caffeine, but I have much more enjoyable streams when I'm hyped up on caffeine. Like it's just a it's night and day difference when I stream without caffeine. You consume a lot of caffeine then, or no, not really. In fact, I'll I take tolerance breaks quite often. About every month, I'll take like a week off of caffeine entirely. But when you do drink, uh, consume it, how often during the day do you get like a dose of caffeine? Uh, like depend. Well, recently I've been actually abusing it quite heavily because I bought these like teas which have like 160 milligrams in it, which is not oh. good. I think that's part of the reason why I even brought this up because I I, right. I did this to myself. But generally speaking, I'll only drink like like 100 okay. milligrams of caffeine in a day and it's at the beginning of my stream and throughout it okay i see i've uh, when i got into university i got into drinking uh morning coffee basically and mm. i've kept it like that because it just i feel like it skips the fucking laggy part of the morning for me when i start brewing the coffee i can smell the coffee you know in the house mm. and then when i drink it it just comes completely removes that like slow start to the morning for me and that's it i very seldom do i drink more caffeine during the day and about the water like ever i've never had the problem you've had ever since i was a kid i've always had my water bottle next to me to this day i always have it next to me and i think i consume like three liters of water per day or something yeah and uh uh, I have like a bo bottle of apple juice in the fridge, which I might drink one glass of. And uh, this is going to sound weird to you, but in Finland, it's very common that we drink a lot of milk. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You've, you've told me that. Like that, you yeah. just basically are raised on that stuff, right? Yeah, since kids, it gets offered to us in like elementary schools or kindergarten even. And mm. milk is always like an option. No matter where you are, whether you're in the cafeteria, in your school, workplace, or getting lunch outside, like milk is all, always there as an option. It's like uh, it's a staple of the Finnish society, and uh, I feel like me and many other Finns, we strive to drink one glass of milk per day. Uh, nowadays, I don't even drink like it from a glass because I make my protein shake that I. Uh, drink after the gym nice, nice. i make that into milk and sometimes when i have cereal it's also in milk so i if i on top of this also drank a glass of milk i'd have to buy a bottle of milk for each fucking day and <laughs> i i don't want to do that <laughs> yeah i i'm definitely still a water drinker i in fact i literally always have a big tall metal container of water next to me it's the idea mm. of going water only. That's like the desire I deep down have. It's just so yeah. hard to get to that point. And it's not like I even need to. I just what I if you what if you try to think the streamers are shilling recently the water drop thing. Uh oh yeah. I, okay, I don't know about that. Explain that to me because I I saw so it. so it's this tablet that gets dropped into water and it like alters its taste. 
but it doesn't add anything negative. If anything, it adds like more vitamins and more stuff that makes the water even healthier in a way. Mm. And you can have different taste uh, tasting tablets, making it so that uh, you li- remove the boredom factor. Factor we well, were talking about. Yeah, it's it's weird because like I'm actually not. Um, I, like I understand what you're saying and like that we have those like things where you just like squirt like some vitamins and a little bit of flavor like there's there's been those everywhere uh I actually enjoy drinking water but I don't enjoy drinking water 100% of the time so it's like okay. what I <laughs> I know this is like a whole like issue that I brought up basically on myself but like <laughs> I, I I just want to find like a drink that's just I can have one every day and I stick to that, but on top of that, I also have water throughout the rest of the day. Right. So I'm I trying see. to find that like special drink that's like okay. Maybe this is, maybe you have maybe to take I, a book from the Finnish book and start drinking milk, dude. Maybe may, it needs to be something with caffeine <laughs> in it. But then again, right. I don't want to drink caffeine. But is there any other chemical that gives you the same feeling as caffeine? No, it's, like, it's just caffeine and sugar, right? It's dude, kind of, it's, kinda, it's, it's so you, good. You don't go and, maybe, maybe, yeah, I'll, I, maybe I'll get into coffee. I've actually never had a coffee phase in my dude, entire coffee, life. Dude, coffee, dude, coffee is, it's like a fucking ritual. It's so addictive might, when you, I think I might get into it. Is there yeah, like, okay, you, what, what are the negatives oh, of coffee? Like just completely unbiased. Like, is there negatives? Well, I feel like it's the coffee and ca- caffeine addiction that follows. Because if I don't get my morning coffee around 3 or 4 p.m., I am going to have a headache. Like, mm. I'm, I'm very aware of this. It's happened multiple times. And I am 100% sure it's because on those days I did not have a morning coffee. So that, that's, just, that's just the caffeine. Because, like, I, I understand that. That's why I always have to take tolerance breaks from caffeine in general. But there's nothing yeah. about the coffee itself that's any different than no just drinking a coffee is beverage. actually really close to because it's made like from water right mm-hmm. uh, you put water and the coffee uh, the grinded coffee beans and then the coffee brewing machine magically gives you coffee and i always put in the old oldly old coffee barista drink whatever to make it like a do they call it an americano when it's like or a latte i don't know i don't know the fucking english i wouldn't know either (laughs) i don't drink my coffee black it's too bitter and i don't enjoy it i like it when it has this smooth gentle taste after you put in a bit of like some people put cream but i find the old option to be more uh, healthy it doesn't Mm. have as much fat in it and uh, it's just an amazing start to your day and everything that leads up to it from the moment where you open the container to take out the, you know, the crushed coffee beans and start putting them in the, uh, in the filter paper. And then the smell like kind of wakes you up a bit and then you turn the coffee machine on and it fuck. like starts brewing it and the smell is even better and holy <laughs> fuck, dude. It's just, uh, I, I, I can't. I'm- I can't do a morning anymore without coffee in my life. I think. I think I'm. I think I'm going to get into. It. I also have really just so over the past year gotten really into oat milk. So yeah, yeah. I think yeah, oat, I, I would yeah, use oat I think milk with it. Yeah, I think that's what I use as well. Oat milk. Yeah, it yeah. has this like it gives this very nice aftertaste of oat to the yeah, coffee, which I yeah. love. Okay, hey, dude. I think you might have sold me. I've been pressured into drinking coffee here and there yeah. or tea i i never have enjoyed the idea of drinking tea every morning that just feels mm. coffee too- is also good because it like dehydrates you a bit so it forces you to drink more water constantly mm. so it like encourages uh, a healthier habit of drinking more water as well the only problem is if you start like abusing the caffeine like you yeah. have and you start yeah. drinking multiple cups of coffee per day yeah i've i've made it like a rule to myself where unless i'm pulling some very long day at the university I, I don't have an afternoon coffee. Okay. Uh, I, I just drink my morning coffee and that's it. And uh, I'll try to stick to that. It's also like coffee uh, is like very close to zero calories almost because it's just water. Yeah. So unless you add in the oat milk, it's like. And I don't mind drinking oat milk because I always like I have an oat milk shake almost every day anyway. With yeah, protein it's powders. very, very good stuff. Yeah. yeah, I like oat milk. Let's see. Pitbull asks, thoughts on new teleport item for Hardcore Iron Man and the new prayer book and rings. So, yeah, um, that new 
teleport item is that is that the one where you can like from a different account teleport your hardcore away no 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 this What's is that? the ring that they are adding that is like constantly keeping track of the input you are oh, giving the game yeah. and uh as soon as whatever amount of ticks that you specified uh goes without you giving the game an input you get teleported out mm. which means that so genius yeah and i feel like this is way long overdue and it's finally they're adding an update that is tackling the fundamental problem that makes hardcore shit in runescape and pretty much the same problem plagues any game where they have an option for uh, hardcore but it's an online game so there is still problems with it because like imagine gauntlet you dc those tornadoes are going to hit you instantly. yes and another thing is, I don't know how it would even work in Gauntlet, because you can't really have a ring on when you're in the... Gauntlet. Oh, yeah, that's true. So it's like an exception, I feel like. Yeah, so Gauntlet's still going to be like the just fucking yeah, good Gauntlet. luck. Mm. But Gauntlet is something, if you're if you're talking about, like, or imagining a scenario where someone is making a new hardcore, they should be rushing Gauntlet anyway and getting it done first before doing anything else. So you're not going to get to the point where you have, like, 10,000 hours on your account and you have to do a Gauntlet if you played smart. Is there anything that could be done? I don't think there is, but I'm just wondering, like... For in Gauntlet? A, yeah, in a situation like that. Or just... Even in a situation where you can die even just three or four seconds of no input. Well, or three or the four problem ticks. is, I think, this is going to be like game consistency kind of thing. Because even now, the teleporting gauntlet is not free. You have to craft it with shards, right? And it's a pretty steep cost, I think, as well. It's like 100 or 200 shards. So... If they made it, let's say, that if you're in the lobby and you have the ring on, and you go into the gauntlet, the tag of you having the ring on is attached to your account, even in the gauntlet, where if you stop giving mm. inputs in the gauntlet, it would still teleport you out of the gauntlet, yeah, or something like that. But like and, you basically uh, would die no matter what, because those tornadoes are going to... Well, how, well how, what, what is the delay they're even looking for? Because you, you also can can't have it... it yourself. Oh, really? Yeah, you can. So I would specify obviously one tick. Like if I don't specify an input for even a tick, teleport me the fuck out. That's what I would do. But and, what if you uh, just that would be tilting as fuck if you didn't pa like you'd have to be constantly clicking every single tick, right? Or, or moving you your could mouse constantly. No, I think it would be enough if you're constantly clicking the F key of the tab where you're, uh, <laughs> where Jesus. you, whether you're in your inventory or your prayer. Okay. Or, okay. You you just. Can you hear my keyboard? Yeah, very loudly. <laughs> you would just do this constantly when you're playing. Okay. It sounds absolutely fucking dumb, but imagine if the trade-off is that you don't lose those over 10,000 hours. Yeah. Does it sound so dumb anymore? I mean, it still sounds dumb, but yeah, it's <laughs> not as dumb. <laughs> yeah, like for me, I feel like the no the no-brainer would be to put the delay on even one tick without an input from me, teleport me out. Yeah, I, I, would I would say just, I would say two would ticks just, just in case one of the ticks like lags. You're just about to get the kill. <laughs> Game server lag. You yeah. miss, miss a space bar or an F key. Just done. Yeah, you might have a point there because I don't know how many scenarios there would be where one tick more <laughs> would would have been killing you. You know. Yeah, that's... the tornadoes are a good point, but I feel like if all the stars align and you're one tick away from dying to the tornadoes and you DC. Just the, take the death at that point. It yeah, was meant yeah, to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So, but for most places, it's. I know we're. Oh, I'm only focusing on Gauntlet right now because it's one of the just super deadly places that even two, even two full ticks of you just being stood still will just mm -hmm. instep dead. Yeah. Yeah, so it but would be great for fair. God Wars. You're not going to die in God Wars within a two tick window of not giving an input if you yeah. stay above the. Because God Wars, you get attacked every five ticks, right? And. Uh, Six by the boss. Should... If you're talking like Bandos, but yeah, five for the minions. Yeah, so every. Let's say every five ticks, there's a check for your health to see if you were sitting about the safe threshold or not. And if you were not, you might die every five ticks or so. Mm -hmm. 
So assuming that while you were not disconnected, you were eating up to at least be able to tank one rotation of getting blasted by everything, you should always be able to live like two, three, four, even the five ticks if you disconnect. Mm -hmm. Assuming you don't disconnect when you were going to eat, right? You have to do it like as soon as you get hit and you go below the threshold of being in danger of dying, you have to eat. Yeah. And then if you play like that, you could always, uh, the ring would always save your life. Uh, in case of a disconnection. So it would apply to all of God Wars, I feel like, even yeah. X. And I think it like Tob would, and Toa. Yeah, it would also save your ass at Vorakath. Uh, if you do the acid f phase in a way where you just walk and you do what I do uh, on my kills, where instead of walking like a small distance, you do like very long clicks of, you know, walking like, let's say, 10, 15 tiles. And yep. you even ignore the fucking poison on the ground just to have that very long click given to the game so that if you disconnect or there is a lag, your character is pathed to move all the time mm -hmm. so that the speed doesn't kill you. Um, if you do that, uh, the ring would save you in that case also, unless it disconnects on that one tick where you... No, wait, the fireball takes multiple ticks to get to you, right? Let's say you disconnect on the same tick, Vorgat fires a uh, fireball. Yeah. Yeah, even there it would save you. Yeah. Um, so th I feel like I already know the answer to this, but I want to just ask... Uh, what would you think about a system where hardcores actually gain more lives? Now, I'm not going to even say the way you would get that, but is there even a chance that that would be appropriate? Uh, no, I wouldn't like it to be a thing. I like the way it is now, and okay. if it worked the way it should, it's perfect. If you make a mistake, you die, you lose your status, you continue as a normal Iron Man. I feel mm -hmm. like the whole extra life things is like a band-aid solution to make up for dying to things like disconnection and yeah, shit. Yeah. And uh, it's a thing in RS3, actually. Based on total levels, you get extra lives up to a total of three, I believe. Yeah, something when like that. When you're, like, maxed, I think. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. What, uh, are your, uh, what are your thoughts on Prey's Foot getting full GM completion CAs? Full CAs God completion. God gamer, dude. God gamer. Yeah, I think that, I, I say he's the greatest hardcore that's ever lived. The greatest uh, hardcore account. I uh, Let me let me hear it. What, 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 do, you, what do you think? Um... Uh, He's is there anybody one of the greats? But for me, Ois Bakalia will always be the best hardcore that ever fucking played the game. Even though now, if you looked at the gear he had and shit, it's kind of scuffed. At the but time. he was so fucking ahead of his time. Yeah. Like, the second best was so fucking scuffed compared to him. Uh, like, he is the GOAT. For me, no matter what anyone else does... Uh, after that, like he is the god of all hardcores, and yeah. nobody can top that achievement, in my opinion. That's that's uh, a that's a fair statement, but it's it reminds me of the dogmatic views of like saying Zezima is still the greatest, which it's you know I would still respect somebody's opinion on that because for the time, you know, when you think of Zezima and just the legendary status of him, it's like okay, you could still say he's like. Uh, I don't really think he is. The, I think he's. That's what it reminds shit. me of of you saying Oispakalja, though, because like, dude. No, I'm... but I, I feel like it's different because in Zezima's case, he was this twenty-year-old dude in an environment where everyone Nine else was fucking seven or eight years old, right? <laughs> but for Oispakalja, it was like yeah. everyone was the on the same like playing field, kind of. But yeah. even on that same playing field, he was so much fucking better than everyone else, and. Uh, yeah, he, he, I have hats off to him for that. And to me, and I feel like many other hardcores, uh, he will mm -hmm. always be the GOAT. And I don't want to mean Praise Food isn't like good or anything. Like, he is definitely one of the GOATs of all hardcores. But the GOAT I, of all GOATs yeah, to me okay. will always be Ois Bagalia. And I don't think anyone can do anything to top that achievement. Uh, well, it looks like you've already made up your mind that it is impossible for it to ever be. Trump. Yeah, I think he solidified, solidified okay. his uh, like see, place as the goat because see, he was. Yeah. Go if ahead. if I were to be like that, I would actually say Praise Foot has solidified the spot in long term wise because 
he was the first ever hardcore to get Grandmaster Zuckhelm. Like, yeah, that's I, true. I just think that is such, and of course it's like more long term. Um, but on top of that, he has one uh, almost one point two bill XP. He's a top page hardcore. He's ranked twenty, and he has a Zuck helmet. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, he is a gamer for like sure. Like that, that there's so much more riding on it than just being like, hey, I'm just going to make this account to get a Zuck helmet. Like that obviously true. would already be impressive. But on top of that, he was risking skilling hours like tons of them yeah and a lot of them yeah, yeah that's true but i feel like the thing that really makes always special for me mm -hmm. is back then like uh people were scared of pvming most people were like either not playing hardcore or they were playing it in a way where they weren't really doing shit and it's always Pakalia kind of proved to everyone that it is possible to go out there and kill all these fucking bosses and have all these fucking items and still be a hardcore and i feel like he started like a movement that's and true the, everything that we see now with like all of these fucking impressive hardcores that have so much shit it all started with him i feel like you're right he you're was right. like the father of all this like yeah i i actually agree with that i agree with that i also in a different way could see Praisefoot having set the standard, just like Oispa did, set the standard of like this is how an impressive, this is how impressive a hardcore can become. I think uh, the same thing Praisefoot did, where I literally said, I was like, there will never be a Zuck helmet hardcore Iron Man. I literally said that when when CA's yeah, first came yeah. out, I yeah, never true. thought it would happen. And mm -hmm. he's the first one, still the only one. I think Mutz is very close, which is Mutz is close. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's insanely impressive. I. You know what? I gotta say, man, like Mutz is one of just those underrated. Yeah, for like, sure. He's so fucking underrated because, like, you always just see Mutz as like, oh, he's at least for me, I'm just like, oh, he's just one of those hardcores that dies a lot. You know, like we've seen yeah. him die, and but man, he has just unlimited determination to make he insane does, yeah. hardcores, and he keeps yeah. one upping the next. Like, yeah, that's true. That is impressive. And, uh, yeah, I respect that in Mots a lot, and uh, I think a lot of people just brush, brush him off by just saying, "Look, like, um, yeah, but he's a remake, Andy." So he yeah, no, he's 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 got balls, man. He's, no, if you objectively look at his current hardcore, it's actually fucking insane. Like the stuff he has, <laughs> and they come out of nowhere, dude. I swear to yeah. God, it's like he's remaking, and then all of a sudden, like you just forget, and all of a sudden he has like, one of the greatest hardcores again. You're like, what yeah, is happening? It, it's nice to see him getting the recognition he deserves at least some bit because his viewership has gone up a lot on twitch mm -hmm. and he also uh he started youtubing and uh it's going pretty well for him i think and yeah. that's probably part of the reason why uh he's getting more viewers and stream as well but he is fucking determined dude and, he uh, is and he's done it for years yeah years of determination years. even even as hardcore became not as popular he stuck with yeah it. Like yeah, that's that's, true. that's something to say. He's not just riding mm -hmm. the hype wave. He's like no, exactly, he's, yeah. he's a hardcore at heart. Yeah, I agree with that. He he was there. I I still remember it. Uh, dude, I just clicked some button on my monitor on accident. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, my monitor just turned off. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's a. Uh, I remember the first time. This is back when I was first streaming, and I was still streaming in Finnish when I first began because. Mm. When you stream in like uh, another language than English and you put it in your stream like as one of the tags or you say that it's a Finnish stream, for Finnish people, it will show up at the top of the category, at least back then, saying mm. that these are Finnish streamers. So even if you have low viewers, you can kind of skip the fucking being in the bottom of the category by like only streaming in Finnish. Mm. And uh, I, for the like... I think first couple of months I only streamed in Finnish and uh, had Finnish viewers and uh, I was doing my first Abyssal Demons and trying to get a whip and Mots raided me uh, and that's how we like kind of met. He was also uh, streaming uh, hardcore back then and uh, we kind of became friends back then and started uh, watching each other's streams and um, to this day, he is my longest sub. We subbed to each other back then and I think next month is going to be 60 months. Jesus. Yeah, so five years. Holy. And these five years, he has constantly fucking played 
sure it's many accounts and he keeps dying but he has constantly played without burning out and quitting and doing other stuff like he is constantly putting in those insane hours and he is determined to have like uh he is determined to have that best hardcore in the game and if he pulls off grandmaster plus maxes i think he's done it yeah yeah because because praise food is the best hardcore right now but Mots has way more gear than him. So if Mots really? evens the playing field, I think so, yeah. Mots has that. everything at this point. There is no way but, some but other hardcore has all this shit. But doesn't Praise Foot have all that? Uh, to be honest, I haven't actually seen Praise Foot's bank. So uh, I, From what I understood, Mots is more geared, but Praise Foot, as long as he has Grandmaster completion, no mm. matter what gear anyone else has, he is the best hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. But if someone evens the playing field with also the Grandmaster and they have all the fucking items in the game basically and mm -hmm. they're maxed that that is the best hardcore in the game and mots is on his way to get there and i hope he gets there me too he deserves he, it he deserves it dude he has put in the fucking hours and yeah. uh, i hope he gets to feel the sweet feeling of victory over all the fucking naysayers who memed him over pre-making and yeah, the dude is just yeah. That is the uh, just definition of determined. Yeah, um, yeah, un unbelievable. Uh, so what do you think about group hardcore? Do you, now I have said this, and of course I was already proven wrong. So anything I say now is just like oh, you don't you know you 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 guess wrong on things. But I n there will never be a group hardcore where everything's dangerous that obtains a zuck helmet that is impossible like that has to be yeah so that's probably be, not be, gonna happen because, because that's like doing six jads without dying like, I, that's like I, doing the five and six no dying you know like shit like that just like crazy shit i think the bigger problem is having to bring in into one team people who first of all can do the grandmaster tasks and then they <laughs> yeah. have to do it oh, yeah. on like an iron man i forgot and they that. have to do it without dying i forgot about all or that. they yeah. they have some lives but i feel like this is like uh, obviously the possibility is there but it's so low that you yeah. might as well say that it's not gonna yeah. happen i feel like it's the same thing with uh, a hardcore getting all pets it's too many hours in a scenario where you're risking a disconnection and you will die eventually Although see, now I actually, with the ring, that might change. But, uh, see, I, uh, I don't agree with that. I actually think it is possible to get all pets. That is way more realistic than getting a... Well, obviously, I think we can both agree on that. That Getting all pets on a normal hardcore is way more realistic than a Zuck helmet on a group hardcore. Um, you got to agree yeah, with that. Like, yeah, yeah. You, okay. you have to remember, like, you can't even die in the Inferno. Well, you can. Not as a group hardcore. You lose your stat. Oh, yeah. Well, five times. Yeah, you have lives. But you, yeah, you have five lives. I mean, that's like not enough for all the content you have to do. No, but I feel like someone who is good enough to do Grandmaster tasks, probably not every one of them is going to die doing that Inferno. I know, but there's Inferno. I mean, Inferno, then again, when you're going fast as well. But, yeah, you're but, right. But there you have to remember so there's Inferno. There's chambers where things are deadly. Like you die yeah. in, in chambers and you die. Yeah. Like you, you have, have to go get a Tebow first to do a lot of these things. Yeah, you're right. I don't think that's gonna happen. It's definitely more unlikely unlike than pets, but I also don't think that the pets thing is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, no, it that's, might. That's insane. It might with the ring, but just statistically, regardless of who the player is, if you look at the hours they have to put in in a scenario where disconnection is death. It's inevitable that at some point <laughs> you will disconnect and die. <laughs> That's what I thought about Zuck Helmet. I was like, it's just inevitable that like you you just are going to die at some. You're going to disconnect here, and then praise what proved me wrong. Mutz is about to prove me wrong. I'm just whenever we see these things, and it was the same thing with um, when Tob was first released. I just remember thinking like, man, soloing Tob is insane. But there will there's no way a hardcore would ever solo this and then a cold one um, does it like that's just like these insanity to this day things. he's the only person who's done it as well i mean he's the only one that really he spent months and months and months of just grinding solo tob on mains yeah and on his iron fucking like, the hours. He, it just became like nothing i mean it was just like he's just it's like a day in the park you know 
He just yeah. became so good yeah. at it, so confident at it that he him sending the the hardcore run. Of course, and now I don't want to say this is a devaluation or anything, but there was such thing as a blood fury at that time, which really is very nice. Yeah, it it came out in the middle of his plan, right? And then he changed the meta around the blood fury, and yeah. he was able to do it faster. What do you think about blood fury in its current state? Uh, it is really powerful. I feel like uh, I don't know, dude. I kind of uh, maybe I'm a boomer, but I look back on the days where when you wanted to solo raids, what you had was the tentacle whip and uh, fucking blow by for head phase. Yep. as an Iron Man. And if you wanted to know prep, you had to be a fucking god gamer. And oh, yeah. I remember when I pulled off my first blowpipe, uh, no preps, holy shit, that felt good. And uh, Trident, no sang, just yeah, no blood and fury, no size, no plant. It's just so different now with how much damage you deal, how much lifesteal you have with different kinds of things. And uh, I don't know, a part of me kind of uh, is sad that you can't have that feeling of overcoming this insane fucking obstacle with your skill because you can just have your items do it for you but uh then again if you really want to do it without those items you can but uh, a lot of runescape players if they like are artificially restricting themselves from doing something they just feel dumb like me at least like the only restriction i ever put on myself was what i chose in the tutorial island which is playing an iron man without dying Within those frames, I can do anything. Yep. And uh, any restriction that I artificially place within those frames just felt meaningless unless there was some uh, like purpose to it. Yeah, I uh, I really hope that there's a new piece of content that comes out soon. Like you've heard of Blue Inferno, like that term it's like it's, challenge mode inferno or whatever it's yeah it's like the uh in the fucking uh corner mountain yeah 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 something like that right um i really hope there is something that comes out that is truly just okay this is what inferno was in 2017 where like it right. comes out and it's just like people look at it and they're like nope 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 never doing that absolutely not the um this is something i kind of i i feel like i need to mention this so there has been a influx of uh like boosting services nothing illegal of course but just the ability to get help with certain ca tasks right, a lot of them yeah. are team based and so mm -hmm. those i think are completely fine and i think those are actually very healthy for the game but so what there needs to be is a, a solo piece of content like the Inferno and they have to make a stance. Well, first of all, there already is a stance that you can't log in and do somebody's stuff. That's a, that's account sharing at that point. That's, that is services. That's not boosting. Right. But um, that's what I really want to see is like a new challenge that is the equivalent of difficulty to what Inferno was. And I wonder how insane it has to be to uh and, and i want it to still be like inferno where you literally can just dodge all damage for the most part like most of most of the damage can be completely negated the last thing i want to see is like uh, a dps check of like you are taking chip damage and you just need to have really amazing gear to yeah that, get would, suck. that, that would be yeah. annoying as hell mm. um because i was just thinking like oh man uh, now i i don't really want to see the inferno the infernal cape get replaced but i would love to see maybe like a new pair of melee boots or something some some like fucking just abyssal boots or like infernal boots or something that's like a, a footwear that's like best in slot footwear it for, could also be like something for the blessing slot right yeah they could do that but i i feel like it needs to be a flex it needs to be a, a visible item i guess but you could make it a visible Blessing. That's or true. Some kind what, of like some kind of like aura like or, some shit. or something. Yeah. Um Yeah, I uh, the problem is, Sebe, I <laughs> this is gonna sound toxic, but uh I don't think like we were talking earlier how the players are so good now. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't think that the J mods are good enough to <laughs> to challenge the skill of the best players anymore in a way that it's done in the past. 
it's I mean it doesn't mean that J mods need to be able to complete it. it just means they need to be able to understand what the design needs to be but there is no shot they will do something like that the way they are saying that TOB was a huge flop because of how not many I know, people that's were what doing it me. and how TOA was a huge success because of how many people were doing it well, there is well, no way we will get something like this well that's why it can't be like a raid it's got to be a smaller piece of content that's just wave based it's it's always got to be wave based i feel like um mm. and I don't know. I think they actually could do it if it's just some like a small arena like the Inferno. And what it is is just very difficult, non RNG bullshit. It, it can't be RNG bullshit. It has to be consistent, but it has to be like okay, there's a wave where there are a bunch of things coming at you right now, and you have just a few ticks to think of how to move in the good placement. Maybe there's no pillars even, and you just are like okay, like I have just a few ticks to think of how to offset all of these guys right now. Mm. And just having that difficulty and having things like, imagine, you know, what, what I just imagined is you can have elements of the Inferno, but on top of like um, things, you know, you have like three monsters hitting you with different styles. So you're constantly having to pray. But on top of that, now the floor is shooting lightning across yeah. one line. So now it's like on top of that, you have to dodge these things that are coming at you. You have maybe healers throwing some bombs, but they're dodgeable, but you have to move in time. Like this, yeah, these elements but, that are so insane, but there's it's all possible to do. And it's not like absolutely out of this world. It just takes constant focus. Yeah. The thing is, Inferno kind of already, in my opinion, pushed what you can do with prayer flicking to the limit of how much skill is required to overcome it. Mm. But the thing you add to the difficulty of that would be like an environmental variable like what yeah. you were describing of having to move like the arena changing for example mm -hmm. if it's like an arena where lava is constantly flowing from here to here and you have to like change where you are and shit like that uh, that would add to it but it would be probably difficult also to do something like that without introducing the rng factor yeah and I also wonder who it really appeals to. Because as I'm saying this, I'm already like, this is going to fucking suck to grind. <laughs> like, like, this is going to yeah. be absolute misery and hell. But it's it's that idea of, no, like, this is possible. But, yeah. the, but, but the possibility comes after the giga brains and the giga PVMers complete it and solve it and tell you. Right. The basic, because that was the exact same thing with Inferno. Inferno for ninety nine point nine percent of the player base was like, nope, not doing this, not touching it. Too impossible, way too impossible. And then the guides start coming out and people explaining how the mechanics work and how, like, okay, if you step here, you know, you're good. And we yeah. need that because things always seem impossible on release, and then they become not impossible. They become yeah. I I think another good reason why stuff they should make stuff like this is that. For games like this, where people play for thousands of hours, it is so important to have aspirational content that challenges the the peak of player ability, you know? Yep. Because once you can clear that that kind of stuff, you know that I've put so many hours into this game and now I am, you know, one of the best in it. I am really good. Like, I feel like that's very important for games to have where it challenges even the peak of player skill and it gives that feeling of you know, accomplishment when you manage to pull off something difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with it. The fang kit felt great. That, that oh thing, yeah, they no I that see. that was a bitch to do. I mean, I I mean, it only took like a matter of day. But I've been playing this game every single day for five years straight, so it's mm. not saying much by me taking a few days. But it still took me a few days to like really master, and it was brutal. Like it sucked. But as soon as you get it, it's that really good feeling of like, okay, I overcame this. Something that I thought was really challenging. And everybody feels that when they get their first Infernal Cape. It's just the game. You just have this sense of confidence. And that, yeah, like you said, we need to bring that element back. We, we haven't had it in a, yeah, in a minute. I feel like it's why people play games like in the first part. It's because you can like... Uh... In life, when you want to achieve things, usually it's like a very long process. But in games, that same process and the dopamine you get from the success is like it's sped up and you get it in like uh, in a faster way. And it's important that you have this loop available for people who get to the like the end of the game and they've done everything in terms of what requires 
a lot of skill and shit and you have that piece of content that everyone like when you when they see you've done it they kind of like respect you and recognize you for you know playing the same game as them but you know they know that you are a lot better than they are at it and maybe one day you know they could also be as good if they get as good at the game mm -hmm. and inferno used to be that when you saw someone have an inferno cape but now it's gotten to the point where <laughs> If you kind of don't see someone have an Inferno game, you think, well, they must not be very good at the game. <laughs> kind of yeah. thing, instead of being something like, oh, he must be very good at the game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is just kind of how the game progresses. Fire Cape used to be that. If you didn't, if you had Nobby Cape, you know, you were still decent, but when you get that Fire Cape, you're the you're the man. Right. Just things keep True. keep progressing. Because now, if you have an Infernal Cape, it's like. Do you have a Zuck helmet? <laughs> what what yeah, kind of helmet true, do you have? I guess. You know, it just yeah, keeps I guess. Yeah, true, I guess. I didn't yeah. think of that. But then again, Zuck helmet is way more like insane. It's a very long-term project as well. Yeah. It's not something that you do once and you've proven your skill with it. Exactly. And it also has the aspect of having to... Like, that's what I dislike about it, how you need the fucking team tasks. I know. That's... It's tedious. It's, it it's, seems misery, and uh, there's a reason why the fucking service teams are popular because people hate organizing teams. Yep. No, I mean it makes sense. Now again, I have to go back to like the MMO aspect of this game, and to be honest, the boosting, as much as it kind of like devalue, like people could say like, oh, well, you didn't earn it because you got it boosted. It's like. It brings that cool element, though, where, like, there is now an incentive to get really good at this so that you can help other players along the way. Mm. It's like, you're now going to profit because you're the one that's organizing a Discord. You're the one that's organizing these players. You're the ones that are setting up this for other players' success. Because, and it's not it's all, it's not all team-based, so on top of that, you still have to do your things solo. And services are still illegal. You can't just have somebody log into your account and do things. People yeah, still exactly. do, of course, but that's mm, technically true. illegal. Yeah, and, it is, yeah. and it should be because it's not I agree. healthy for the game to what are your be okay with someone just doing shit for you. What are your thoughts on Ruinous Powers, the new prayer book that's no so, one's in beta testing briefly? So I haven't really uh, personally looked into this much or tried them out or anything. I've just... Uh, read what others think and it seems like no matter if you're a very good player or a very bad player or a redditor or anything everyone seems to be in agreement that for the most part that these are bad and they are overpowered and uh, they should be scrapped what are your thoughts do you, do you agree well the thing is, if we're going to get uh, prayer so powerful that it trivializes all the content we have, the next step then would be to have new content that is so hard that is basically undoable without these prayers. But I still don't know if I like the trade-off of everything until this point becoming redundant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I I'd rather have that scrapped instead of like... Because it sounds like EOC to me in RuneScape 3 where such a big change was added that everything until that point became like legacy and completely like trivialized because it wasn't designed to be killed with this combat system. But everything from that point onwards was kind of designed with the new combat system in mind. And eventually the game actually became kind of good. But uh, <laughs> fuck me, dude. The reason we even have old school RuneScape is because they made a mistake like this in the past or choice not necessarily a mistake and uh, it really annoys me that they are playing with ideas that uh, are kind of going down the same path as that one or even considering them a fucking overpowered prayer book being exactly something like that and without again without having tested them myself but if they really are as broken as everyone says i don't think something like that would be good for this game so just to share my thoughts i um what listening to people that are very much in the high level PVM scene, no monkey is the person I'm going to bring up because I did watch his video. Now, mm -hmm. according to him and according to these players that really have done the testing. And I, I want to be very clear. Like I have not done my due diligence in going around and testing all these things with team based content and all that. So I am going to lean on like what the experts have to say, quote unquote experts 
Um, and what No Monkey said, he had a great ramble, very just calm and collected, telling me about the prayers, telling the community what he thinks about him. Of course, he's going based off of PVM route. There's not the PVP side of things. So some of the prayers he was saying needs to be scrapped entirely or this doesn't have any use. There are There is still the PVP element of the game that a lot of us tend to kind of forget about, which, <laughs> I mean, yeah, anyway. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so he says that there are prayers that clearly are better, but they're not like substantially better broken there are some that in some situations are broken and they do would they would need to be rebalanced but there are some prayers that it will just never be used basically and there's some prayers that might are just a bit over tuned my feeling and because people have come to me and said hey like is it really fair that you just want the whole, entire thing to be scrapped like what if they balance it and i have just said now i want to remain open-minded i don't want to become so obsessed with my own first view at things but I am still leaning on my first view, which is it feels wrong to log into this game and not be able to see the classic prayer book. Now, I know there will still be situations. The The one situation I always think of is like Jads, for example. CBET on stream was doing six Jads with the new prayer book. It's impossible to do it, basically, because you're taking chip damage because right, the, yeah. the prayers just don't. So they're... So there will still be scenarios where you have to switch to the different prayer book. And I kind of like, I initially really liked the idea of a new prayer book. I think part of the reason I'm a little bit upset by it is one, if the prayer book does come out, you need to be able to rearrange your prayers. That's step number one. You need to be able to do that because the prayers are in the fucking wonkiest order of all time. And you also need to clean up how they look. They look bad. Even after cleaning them up a little bit, they I saw the Twitter. Yeah, graphics. I saw the Twitter. They all, just man. look so archaic and like, yeah, it just does. like you're going all over. Look at the standard prayer book. Of course, we have the nostalgia to kind of lean on, which makes it seem normal. But like, they just are very distinct. They're clean. There's not a bunch of random symbols and shit popping up out of everything. It's just one icon that's big and bold with a little uh, outline. So clean that up and that would instantly make me feel better about it but the problem is is like i like old school and i've i'm not like a, an obsessive purist player but i like being able to log in and things look familiar i log yeah, in yeah i, feel I see the familiarity like the spell books you know because we the spell books are already kind of classic like we've all we've always kind of had the ancient spell not True, always yeah. but you know we've always had that so that is part of the nostalgia and that's part of the old school but We've never had a different prayer book. And I think just the change of it is so daunting to me. And again, this is yeah. my personal opinion on it. I don't want to have to log in and have to like relearn things. It's like what you said, where things start feeling legacy mode, where it's like, oh, I'm going back to my legacy prayer book. Or there's, there is something about that. There's something that's really just makes me kind of feel sick. <laughs> that's the only word I could think of, is just mm. logging in and things look different. Things are different. Yeah. It's that feeling of EOC where like, yeah, you'll eventually get used to it. But do is that what we want in the game? Is that what I want? I don't personally. But again, I'm trying to remain open minded. But first thought, it's so hard that I I just don't want things to change. I want to keep the, the original prayer book. I'm okay with new prayers being added four new prayers from the four new bosses. I think that'd be great. And people can decide what they what those are or something like that. But I get nervous right now having a brand new prayer book that has just a shit ton of new prayers yeah it is pretty like overwhelming for sure and it's hard to believe that uh, it would be added in a way where it doesn't break the balance of everything completely i feel yeah. like the prayers are in a really nice spot where they are currently and like even a subtle change they made where they added the fucking augury and rigor already changed the game so fucking much mm -hmm. like it was an insane power boost which was good and where it came from also made sense and uh but completely having a new book with shit like this i i don't know dude i also kind of like the way my prayers look and where they are and yeah i don't know yeah it's I, it's, it's I, worrisome yeah. it worries yeah. me about the trajectory of the game as soon as we do that uh things are gonna feel different look different um you know, we got to have change in this game, but I don't think, I just think it's too much. It's just like, yeah, boom, not like, everything has to change. Like, yeah. 
See, it would be like having a new very... equipment tab. Like, imagine just like re, re yeah, the equipment. You just have like all weird. this new shit. Like, it's you would eventually get used to it, but it's just like, oh, this is mm. it's a lot. Yeah. I'd rather them, like, if they want to introduce power creep, just fucking bring overloads, dude. Like, I don't want the whole fucking prayers to change and everything. I'd rather have, like, a new potion that isn't even mm -hmm. actually new and just be able to use that for more power. Yeah, and here's another here's another problem is like we have this idea in the player base where and this is like speaking to like high level PVMers where people are they're worried about power creep they're aware of it but yet they deeply deeply just want things to continually get overpowered overpowered overtuned overtuned because not only are we releasing this brand new prayer book but we're getting brand new rings. Which have yeah. mage bonus, moat mage damage, and range oh. damage. And we're having brand new prayers that do 30% extra damage instead of just the original like 23 or whatever. And it's like, dude, you're going to go into old bosses and just wipe them. I mean, that's already what we feel with um, God Wars, it seems like. It's just like you go yeah, into God Wars true. and they're like a cakewalk, kind of. And it's just going to continually get more of a cakewalk. I think we should really... This is just another point on releasing the new prayer book is like it is da it is power creep. Now, of course, there are downsides to it. I'm not disagreeing that it's just pure power creep. There's clearly downsides, chip damage being one of them and the most annoying part of it. I fucking hate chip damage. Um, so you're going to have to th this is another like just really shitty part is you're going to have to decide whether you're going to want the extra power. But now you have to accept this nuisance, the fucking nuisance of chip damage. It sounds it, cringe. It's so cringe. It's so annoying. Yeah, but you're going to have to accept it because it's like the efficiency. And you don't have to. Yeah, People are going to start freaking out just by me saying you have to. But come on. No, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah that's sure. that's how it works in this game. And now you have to mm. suffer with this bullshit. Oh, I yeah, get nervous, man. But it is scary, yeah. I, I hope they scrap it. They take the L and just go back to the drawing board and... I agree. That's my opinion, of course. Everyone has different ones. I've seen it on my comments. I will say, though, if you do have a different opinion, you want ruinous powers, you being calm and collected like no monkey does a huge service for your side. Because I swear, in my when I made that ramble talking about it needs to be scrapped, every single person that had an opposing view was just fucking angry. Like, genuinely, like, pissed off and, like, yelling and had no real, like, great input to say. <clears throat> like, they... Yeah, it was bad, so... If you want your side to look a little bit better, maybe just, you know, take a chunk out of No Monkey. No Monkey was very... You know what? I'm, I want No Monkey on the cast. We got we got to talk about the prayer book. Right? Yeah, you should get him on the cast. Because he really is a great PVMer, and he knows a lot, and he's really talented, so... Yeah. Yeah. I want to remain open-minded for those listening and those that have made it this <laughs> far. I'm, I'm going to remain open-minded, but I need to just state my feelings. That's how I feel, honestly. Okay. Let's see. Haven't talked about the new skill yet. We have not. Saving best yeah. for yeah, best for last. Well, not quite last, but yeah, sailing. What do you think? Uh, I'm a sailing enthusiast for sure. I hope it wins. I'm it, from the beginning. It was what I wanted, and when they pitched the three skills, taming was instantly something like, "Wow, this like there is no way this uh, this like lacks lacks possible depth it could have to the skill. It sounds boring." At least compared to t uh, sailing and uh, shamanism, and shamanism just sounded scary to me. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like the it's, prayer book thing. It, it sounded like good and all, but when, once I started thinking a bit more about, okay, so we're gonna fucking be able to put like uh, mods on our gear and shit now. Wouldn't there be like optimal mods for every boss that if you don't have, you're crawling and you have to like either have multiple sets of gear, same gear for different bosses, or you have to constantly be swapping the mods you have on your gear. And like you, an element is introduced into every area of the game that you now have to optimize in order to do that other uh, activity efficiently, yeah. which is way beyond the scope of just adding a new skill. It's like fundamentally changing how the fucking core game works in yep. the first place. And I, I'm just not a fan of that because it would require the balance to be pulled off perfectly because either it's useless 
and it doesn't do anything, or it's overpowered and it breaks the balance of whatever the new piece of gear is affecting. It's going to be like very hard to walk in the middle where it's like a nice buff to something and it doesn't like completely break the way it worked. And that I'm not just talking about one or two activities here. The way they pitched it, that you can put it on like skilling tools or gear, it would literally change every activity in the game to have like an aspect of shamanism introduced to it. And everything would have to be rebalanced. And uh, it sounds like it's just going to go tits up and it's going to be shitly balanced and it's not going to work. Yeah, it would and, be uh, it would be a mess. It would be a mess too, and things would have to become mm. untradeable. And you're, I don't know. It, it, yeah, th I liked the idea of shamanism. Like you said, it's like it sounds cool, but then you really think about it, and it's like this is bad. Sailing, on the other hand, it's almost like the opposite. Like initially, you're like, oh god, this is going to be really game changing but then you think about it like this is actually going to be the least game changing yeah it's it's like adding like basically a new slayer <laughs> it's like adding a new continent almost it. like that's like yeah. the idea of it but the skill itself will work a lot like slayer because uh, it will have its own method to train it of course but mm -hmm. as you unlock levels it unlocks like new pieces of content where new items can come into the game from much like how slayer works yep and the higher Slayer you have, the more challenging content you can do and the more rewarding stuff you will get from them. I think it's like own whole own like new progression system into the game, an aspect you can progress along Slayer as you're leveling your account from mid game to end game. And uh, a lot of people say it plays out like a mini game, but then you could just say that Slayer should also be a mini game because in my mind, at least, they are very similar in how they function as a skill where they... Yeah. Like, it's yeah. It's too early to even say it's a mini game because nobody has, nobody knows what Jagex is about to pitch. Everybody has their own idea of what sailing is in their own mind. They have not come out with a detailed pitch of what sailing is actually going to be. So True. everyone that says it's going to be a mini game, you have your own idea of what sailing is going to be, where it could be completely different. Because like True. me, for example, like I have my own idea of what sailing is going to be, but I don't know if that's going to be what's actually pitched. Mm. So, like, everybody right now is in this limbo of thinking what sailing could be. And some of some people have very negative thoughts toward it because they're thinking of, like, this is going to be shit. But let's just wait and see what Jagex actually pitches before and we start. I'm, like, I'm also scared that because the community seems to be so divided between shamanism and sailing, does yeah. it even matter what Jagex pitches? Is sailing, is there anything they can do to actually make it past the second poll? Because I feel like yeah. people will just spite on it. I actually think... didn't win, and uh, I don't think we are actually gonna get. Uh, g even if the sailing is good and everything, I feel like the shamanism Andes have already made up their minds, and um, it's definitely more than j just thirty percent of voters. I feel like. Um, that could that's a possibility. I'm actually very much leaning on that sailing. They will pitch it pretty well. And they're going to give it just, they're going to go about it in a really cautious manner. Um, and over time, where I actually think that they're, it'll actually pass pretty smoothly. I hope so. That's I would be fine. really happy if they uh, add sailing to the game. I would be, I would love to have a reason to log on to my hardcore again. And uh, depending on what's happening in life at the time, I'd love to like just put other life on pause for like two weeks and just degen sailing to 99 fucking 16 hours a day or something for two weeks i would fucking love that Dude, honestly the best part about it is everybody is going to be out on sea day one for yeah. the first month like just every single person in the game is going to be out to sea just fucking enjoying hopefully what what has to offer and the also another beautiful part about sailing is just the um, opportunity, of course, we have to wait until what they actually pitch, but like the opportunity to just have like random encounters and just the excitement of the open waters that nobody has yet explored. And shamanism kind of offered that with the spirit realm, but it's not the same as being on the open waters. It's like, I don't know, man, the, the f getting your own boat, sailing places, defeating new stuff, exploring new places, like that just sounds so good.
It does sounds sound good. good the, yeah, the gameplay sounds fun. Like you finish one voyage and and you're like, let's go again, let's go again, you know. Yeah. And if they pull it correctly and they add some sort of variety to it, if it's oh. not uh, constantly the same shit, you know. Uh, I feel like this can be really like brilliant. They they can really do something beautiful here. I feel like if they. And I'm very happy with how they initially pitched it in the triple skill po block or whatever. Everything they described what they wanted sailing to be was exactly what I also had in mind. Yep. And uh, if they deliver on that vision without, in my opinion, without putting too much emphasis on actually moving the fucking ship, it should yeah. be more about like getting to somewhere and then actually doing somewhere wherever mm -hmm. you are. Uh, not so much the actual moving of the ship. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I feel like so much cool stuff could be introduced. Like you could have these nodes that you encounter in the sea, for example, a new type of fish that heals like 23 or 24, for example. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you can't just sit there and infinitely fish it. You could either have like a set amount of cargo you could bring bring back in your ship from every sailing voyage you do that you can upgrade over time and you have to kind of like pick and choose what you bring bring back home with you or just make the resource node that you can fish from straight up like maybe you can get like 50 fish from it and then it like depletes yeah yeah, just chuck a huge net overboard and just like wait for these fish to just gather. Like, yeah, obviously maybe not the super high level fish, those those ones that heal a lot. But like, imagine you just go and just just get like shit tons of and and that's just we've just described one thing you can do for fishing, right? Yeah, there yeah. is so much stuff you can pull with this. Like, oh my god, I uh, I really hope the community doesn't fuck this one up. And, uh... <laughs> Because I have faith in the J1s on yeah. this. I feel like they can deliver a sailing skill that uh, all of us will enjoy. And yep. They they have whole... a lot riding on it, too. Because if they yeah. nail this, like the game's going to be looking healthier than ever. If they fuck this up, yeah. the game's not going to be looking too good. That's true as well, yeah. I have faith in the J1s on this one. I feel like uh, they already demonstrated their ability to listen to the players a lot on what they want for sailing. And they kind of managed to make the best version of that and if they keep developing it this way uh, i think the 24th skill of old school is actually going to be a great one and uh, i feel like a lot of people will happily train it to 99 and probably even after 99 still like just do it for fun who do you think will be rank one after uh on on what ladder on the main high scores Ooh. like rank one overall mm. I think if Bailey wants to go for it. Do you think he he'll, he, he, he has the highest chance if he goes for it? If he wants to go for it, I think he will do it. Who do you think yeah. would be who where where do you uh, let me ask you this. Where do you think Hey Jace would end up? I don't know what his motivation would be to retain like a high high spot on the ladder. I know he's made it like a very big part of his like identity to have the rank two perma in his title and shit like that. And all of that is basically, you know, it's gonna mm -hmm. not be a thing anymore. And uh, I don't know how like Chase has the time, right? He he streams full time. Yep. He can just he can just wake up, play until he goes to bed, and uh, if he wants to, he can sweat it out in a way where he will be one of the first to get the. 200 mil i just don't know how determined he is or is he mm -hmm. just like is he depressed in his mind that there's going to be a new skill i i just don't know uh but i i think if he wants to have a single digit finish he he can yeah. but it, he's it's gonna require determination he's proved clearly that he's a very long-term player so with yes, a relatively yes. short term now it's now for a lot of players going for 200 mil in a skill is not short term but for these people that have done, you know, 23 skills over multiple years to 200 mil, like, it's relatively short term. So you have to, because what Jace did for so long, I mean, he's explained it. Like, he just would play, you know, like, whatever it was, 12 hours a day, 11 hours, like, whatever the average, what he did, but he did it every day to get to 200 mil all. Yeah, exactly. He, yeah. he was not pulling 19-hour days for a few months. Yeah, okay. he's a very consistent long-term player. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see. But then again, every 200 mil 
player for the most part everybody that's achieved 200 mil is yeah technically more of a long-term player than a short-term the, anyway the difference is the race before was to 4.6 bill xp this time mm. it's only to 200 million yep so there's a lot more room to like be a dj and, and put in those insane hours before you reach the wall where you burn out yep so it it, it would be doable to be able to teach and 200 mil and it's just i feel like the person to get to 100 mil first will be the one that put in the unhealthy hours every day because there course, will be someone yeah. who can do it for 200 mil before the point where you burn out or you know i just hope when the skills released that it literally is like nobody knows the meta which will be the case on release but i want it to like i want nobody to know the meta for like the first few months where it's just like oh shit we just discovered something that's even more that would be really cool yeah because that's really where the fun comes in it's not like oh this is what this is max xp we know it for a fact just grind it now it's like nah there's there's secret methods and then you're like tracking the top players on temple and being like how the fuck is he getting this much xp in six hours and shit and you start like yeah that would be interesting and that actually means that jace would be at a disadvantage because if he were to find an efficient method for example he's streaming it so then other people find it but if uh, somebody privately you know with a team of you know a private discord of people you know theory crafting and stuff and just kind of keeping things secret for the advantage like they clearly will have the advantage true but at the same time if it's not like completely kept secret uh, i'm sure jace's community would be more than happy to constantly Mm -hmm. be giving him the most uh recent public best method that is known right absolutely absolutely so it's kind of but i I don't think uh jace can finish first yeah that would be that would be very impressive i would have to say i think because Chase is like known to, he said that he's done like a 12 hour stream once and he absolutely fucking hated it. He's never going to do it again. And he would never <laughs> even consider like a 24 hour stream. Yeah. And like, uh, like you said, he's good in the long run when we're going for like 4.6 bill XP. But when the gold is just 200 mil XP, the person who is going to put in the most unhealthy hours will win because it's not like a multiple year project. It can probably be done mm-hmm. within months. Or maybe even a few months. I don't know how fast they're going to make it. Um, just kind of s- switching gears a little bit. What do you think about the new influx relatively uh, over the past like year or two of collection log Andes? Yeah, I guess it was like the natural uh, development after... Well, it, it basically took up the space where hardcore was, right? Constantly yeah. trying to get the best hardcore, but... Eventually realizing that in the end you're at the mercy of the server, so and it it kind of makes sense from like a content creator perspective because you have like infinite content basically a reason to log in and do whatever and you can do literally whatever and when someone asks you're like oh I'm doing it for the collection log and you know that's it you don't need to come up with a reason like oh i'm doing this so i could have this to do that or it's because i want this item or that it's like it's very easy to just if you have the motivation it's very like you have a lot of streaming hours or youtube hours just in like going for one green log after another and uh yeah, I mean, I think Bodhi has a lot of influence on this becoming a thing because he's the big guy who made the move and the video explaining his uh, philosophy before, behind changing from remaking hardcore to playing a main, detailing his like uh, mindset on it and stuff. And uh, he has a huge impact on what everyone does in the game. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, uh, there was a phase where remaking hardcores and watching them speedrun early game, optimize early game, making these fucking pacing guides and shit was a thing. But now uh, there's the collection log thing. I I tried it for a bit on my hardcore, but fuck me, dude. I just uh, the it's one not for thing everybody. I've always hated in this game are the fucking RNG grinds where the method is not enjoyable. And I could just I could not do it to myself where I put myself through one shit grind after another just to have some icon highlight and the number go up by one in the log. That is not for me. Mm-hmm. 
So what kind of player are you right now? Are you just kind of like enjoy whatever is enjoyable to you? Or do you actually have like some sort of long-term kind of like, this is well, really what I enjoy most? The end game is always getting to solar raids and having the raid, reason to solar raid. I fucking love that shit. It's so much fun. And now that I can play the game, I can be doing it with stuff that I didn't have on the hardcore. Like all the raids I did on my hardcore... All of them was with a swamp trident and a lance. Half of them was with a twisted bow, and the other half was with a blowpipe. So I haven't done any of it with like a shadow. I haven't used a fang there ever. I've never mm. used a sanguinesti. And I have all these interesting things I want to try out at chambers. But what kind of a player I am is like, I need a goal to be able to play this game. And when I have that goal, I play unhealthy hours maybe even so i'm gonna know that i have a goal i'm gonna try to still maintain my like uh pace at progressing my studies and also going to the gym and cooking food and every now and then seeing my friends now as well because it's soon summer here in finland and our summer is so short but it's so beautiful i i don't want to spend all of it just uh cooped up at my computer because yeah. we get to do that nine months of the year so the three months where it's actually warm and sunny outside i want to be in the nature with my friends going hiking going to summer cottage and doing all these things that are part of the finnish summer do you think the collection log will ever be completed by somebody isn't casey like less than 200 slots off I feel like less the biggest the, grinds... Him and, him and Basilogist are actually less than 100. They're like 80 yeah. or something off. But it's like, like it's like third the, age. I feel like the biggest grinds in the collection log are not as big grinds as getting 200 mil all, no? Besides third age. I mean, is it actually more hours than getting 200 mil all? Uh, 200 mil all is what, like 12k hours, I think? Mm -hmm. um, you have to do over 100,000 masters. And a master, I think, on average is about like 15 minutes. So like four an hour. So that's 25,000 hours just just doing the clues, not getting them. Right. But just doing the clues would be twice the time it takes to get 200 mil all. But, yeah, but people have already got 200 mil all and they've played a lot since then almost like soon the yeah, hours yeah, yeah. will but, even be doubled in some case but, so but, technically in terms of hours it would be doable i mean yeah it's doable for right now but imagine you know uh, just imagine somebody that can just spam dragon imps every day first of all that's unrealistic cuz everyone that is doing masters is doing like morton like the, the shades of morton or whatever so that takes right. a half hour so you're looking at basically 40 minutes minimum for a master. So we're really looking at like 70,000, yeah. 80,000 hours. That is a lot of fucking hours. And and Just... that's and that's like going rate. And then you think about going dry or yeah. you know potentially lucky. But then on top of that, just imagine somebody does get lucky and let's just say does it in like 40,000 hours. What has come out since then? I'm that's imagining true, multiple also. clue expansions. <laughs> I'm imagining <laughs> so many more bosses, so many more raids. So many impossible things that have come out since then. Like, so when people think, you know, it, it might be possible or whatnot, like, I don't know, man. I Yeah, when you take into account how there's constantly, like, the pace of them adding more hours into the collection log kind of outpaces the amount of hours people are constantly putting in. And, and just think about this. Think about if somebody does complete all third age but mm -hmm. are still missing a few bosses or mini games, And in the time they're doing that, another clue especially comes out that just releases one new third age piece. <laughs> so yeah, now you have fun. to do all that shit again just to grind for one third age piece, which yeah. is literally just as long almost as Pretty much, going yeah. for all of them. So Yeah, yeah. The, the third age kind of makes it uh, very Impossible. difficult. Yeah. yeah. Now so it, I, it can definitely be done without the third age though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, it's almost at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So, but my personal like philosophy and feeling toward it is like, I think it's really good that the collection log is never seen as achievable. It, it should be seen that way. I think as soon as we start deciding like, oh, like let's make it achievable. 
it just becomes really cringy and you're going to make things easier for no reason. You're going to just encourage people to just keep begging for things to get easier. If, if it like is an achievable goal, people are going to beg for it to become more but achievable. But isn't the only unachievable goal basically the third age? Yeah, right now. Yeah, I see. So, I mean, it, you know, the, the community could just decide like, okay, well, you've completed collection log minus third age. And like that's yeah, a, and it's probably cool, gonna happen. That's, that's a well. cool thing. Yeah, yeah, and that'll happen over the next decade, um, or shorter, maybe the next five years or whatever. Um, yeah, I think it's fine though. What I want to see though is the I want to see a, a collection log high scores that just shows the number. I want, yeah, that I think that, that should be, be a thing. I think yeah, that'd be fun to see. Yeah, that should be a thing for sure. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah but, I, I also like that it's like unachievable. It's there. There's always something to do if you want to work towards it, but it's unrealistic to think that you're going to actually completely finish it. Yeah. Path of Exile has some similar things. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, that's like a great way to go about it, I think. Just make something completely <laughs> impossible. But you can still go for it and you can still flex being rank one if you really wanted to sweat. Yeah. Um, what do you think about a completionist cape eventually coming out? And what do you what would you uh, want to see on it if you did want it? Right. Well, fuck, dude. Uh, would it be like I don't know? Would it be like a cosmetic update to Max Cape, or would it actually like offer some new shit? I don't know. That's the thing. Like, that's another question to ask you. Like, what would you want to see? I think. Well, like. If they want to make it different, they should make it like a max cape and an achievement cape in one, maybe. <laughs> With the music cape and the fucking uh, quest cape, you know. Yeah, I was thinking like C all CAs, all quests, all achievements, all music, all emotes. And... Doesn't RS3 require like some minigame completion shit? Probably. I The thing is like... For an OSRS completion, I get worried about like all that stuff because then it bleeds into collection logging, and then like at what point do you just even consider it a completion escape? Yeah, that's true. That and and, like, and yeah. do, do you need to get like two hundred mil all? Or do yeah, you have a max or cape? isn't that like for trimmed completionist or something? In yeah, RS3? I've, I have no idea. I don't. I don't really. I'm very indifferent on a completion escape. I'm like fine if they come out with it, but like, it's. I don't know. Like. <laughs> I don't know what it would be. I don't know what the J mods are going to decide. And the last thing I want is like, if it is somewhat achievable and people are getting it, like the, the fucking upkeep. I hate upkeep. Yeah. Dude, I'm true. not going to lie. Like, I actually genuinely like regret. I know you kind of are forced into this with CAs. Like, you kind of have to have it be upkept because new PVM content is always going to come out. But I yeah. hate it. I hate <laughs> achieving. Imagine your infernal cape had to be upkept just all the time. Like, oh my god. god! Damn it, man. It's How do you feel about the movement on Renit mostly, where uh, they are pushing for max capes to not be uh, unusable when the new skill comes out? Uh yeah. So I asked Hebox and JCW last week about that. I'm definitely on just the side of just scrap everybody's max cape. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Yeah, and the, and the biggest reason is is because like l think about it. For those that are max, you already have the capability of maxing because you already did it. So one more skill is not the end of the world. You've you've already proven you're a nerd, and also everybody's gonna lose it. So you're not gonna be like alone in it. Every single yeah. person is just at square one again. It's gonna be fun. Like that's the excitement. Yeah, I agree. I also think it would be fun to remax and uh, gain the ability back of uh, using the cape again. I feel like for me, that would be a big factor in wanting to like run to 99 as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. I, I would be really disappointed if they make it so that there's some like you get to use the cape after uh, the new skill is out because it's a max cape and you should be max to use it yeah so even though i say you know i hate the upkeep of things <laughs> there it just it's the only thing that makes enough sense so as much as i have a personal problem with yeah uh, keeping shit like i don't know and it's it's a skill where it's not like a weekly thing or even like multiple times a year it's like this is once true. in a decade right now like it's yeah true not that big of a deal yeah. yeah, that's true. So, um, 
Yeah. Let's think. Um, no real other topics on the on the Twitter thread, so I guess I'll just ask you, is there anything that's kind of like been on your mind lately toward the game or toward streaming or toward like anything that... I don't know. Uh... No, not really. I'm just really happy. My life is kind of shaping to be at a point where I kind of know what I want, what I want to do, and then stuff like that. Yeah, that's like the beauty. And, uh, that's like the one, the one real positive of just getting older is just things yeah. start. It, it feels like things just start falling into place, kind of. Where yeah, you're so yeah. lost for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely looking forward to like, let's say, five, six years from now, where I'm even more established, and hopefully, yeah. I have some sen senior dev position at some company, and I'm like, you know. Yeah, you think stuff and you think like like right now we think like we're like we're getting it together and it feels like okay like we're we're starting to see the light we're starting to see the vision and stuff and then you think five years like think five years ago what your vision yeah. was and what you thought <laughs> life was gonna be and whatnot so yeah. whenever whenever I think back like five years ago I'm like holy shit like I was so yeah, different so mindset different. wise and then mm -hmm. you think five years in the future it's like okay that's probably gonna be a bigger change almost. Yeah, for sure it's going to be. And uh, there's always, like, humans never settle for what they get there. There will always be something new they start striving for. So in five years from now, uh, you might be going for, like, a completely, some different kind of aspirations and something you can't even think of right now. Mm -hmm. Well, um, mm -hmm. I guess we'll kind of wrap things up. So I want to ask yeah. you for, uh, I guess, you know what, I'll ask you for three shout-outs. Why not? Uh, people in the community or J mods or streamers or wh whoever mm, uh, that you, you sure. think deserve a, a little shout out. Well, I'll give one shout out to my crew of Iron Man members. Well, technically that's two, but Tip and Hauke, uh, they are great friends and uh, I'm really looking forward to playing their group account again with them because the game launch playing together with them was some of the most fun memories I have uh, from this game. The group Iron Man launch was so much fucking fun. Just constantly speed running and being like rank one or two trio group and refreshing the high scores after every quest completion because the total levels from the quest experience <laughs> would like bump up our rank and shit like holy shit that is so much fun dude and uh, another shout out to Monny uh, you know the Finnish yep. uh, streamer he's been playing hardcore recently and I have been enjoying his streams a lot I, I've actually not much uh, not watched much uh, Finnish Twitch before but uh, when he made his new hardcore I'm like very attracted to uh, this early Iron Man content it's so much fun to me and uh, definitely my favorite part of the game and uh, I've really been enjoying his streams and uh, shout out to him for doing that for sure and uh, what else I guess shout out to you, dude. I'm glad you made it out from the pit that psychedelics can take you into on the top. And uh, I hope things go up f from here for you and your mind kind of goes into this place where it has clarity and uh, you enjoy being sober, like we were talking about earlier, because it feels so fucking good when you get to that point, dude. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, this was really nice. This felt like a, um, I don't know, like a, just like an old catch up with like, or a, like a catch up with an old friend. So, yeah, I also haven't really talked in depth about these, uh, experiences much with other people than pretty much my closest friends. But now because, uh, in Finland, these usage crimes, they like get old after five years, where if you don't get caught for them in five years, it's basically <laughs> fine. So <laughs> no, more, more time than that has passed. It's, uh, yeah, it's to keep okay restating, to... it's been seven years. Yeah, seven yeah. Years. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, so. that's, that's good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that it's something that I can at, at least feel safe talking about. Like, imagine you just couldn't ever talk about 
these kind of things. It would almost yeah. like I feel like suppressing things, even you know when things are. I don't know. I just feel like suppression in general never ends up leading to anywhere great long term. Uh, it's like, it's good a big to just part of the it. problem around drugs and why they're pushing for decriminalization so people could actually get help without getting labeled as criminals. Not so much to yeah. encourage people to use these substances. Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree with that. I think just being like it's what what everything always comes down to when I think of like progressing humanity and like making us not just go into full on nuclear war and destroy all humanity like eventually, you know, is like what yeah. really needs to happen is just compassion. Like that's True. like that is the only thing that truly matters is like just being compassionate towards others. Like everybody's yeah. different. Everyone's had their different life stories. Everyone has different beliefs and ideas about life. I mean. I was listening to a podcast earlier. It was like Lex Friedman with this other guy on it. And he was just talking about how like every single human has a slightly different story about what humanity is and what life is and what are like truly mm -hmm. like there is no just data center of what everybody believes and people True. are. It's like, no, every single person has a different story basically. And so yeah. just the, having that compassion and just, I think that's what ultimately matters in life. So. True. Well said. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Ari. Down in the description, for those still listening, we will have Ari's links, Twitch and Twitter. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah. I I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Okay. Good, dude. Uh, yeah. Next week, I will be in Tennessee with the base crew, and I'll be enjoying my sobriety there be drinking eating my carrots and broccoli <laughs> while everyone else is jumping off the wall so now uh dude, we'll see what <laughs> we'll see what happens but i'm very excited <laughs> to meet up this is going to be my first little like meet up with people so i'm really really thrilled so bye week for next week but uh the next week um i will be announcing it on twitter so go follow me down on twitter if you want to keep up to date uh if you want to support the podcast down in the description is also a patreon link so if you guys want your name on the title screen feel free and thank you. Thank you again, Ari. We'll catch you in the next yeah. one, guys. Thank you, man. Peace. Bye.